scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. We thank you. You're my treasure, my pride. Great is the measure of your royalty. Had a shield for me, the glory and the litter of my head. Very simple song of worship says, But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, the glory and the litter. Let me sing it one more time. That's our testimony in this house. For thou art a shield for me, the glory and the lifter up of my head. My glory and the lifter of my head. For thou, O Lord, art a shield. Let's sing it together. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the litter of my head. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. Glory and the litter of my head. For thou, oh Lord, you are the shield for me. My glory and the litter of my head. Bless us tonight, oh God. We will never, never forget your presence. But there is nothing we can do without you. We declare it. We are not ashamed to let the world know that you are our glory. We pride ourselves only in your presence. 
it is of your fullness we have received tonight lord we ask that you speak to the needs of your people challenge us there are people here trusting you for all kinds of encounters there are people here trusting you for healings for miracles for breakthroughs others trusting that you refire their lives and take them to new dimensions of the anointing i ask tonight that you minister to everyone in the name of jesus god bless you please greet one another and be seated hallelujah let's see how fast we can go tonight so that we can finish early pray for me we're really working on our timing we want to see how god will grant us grace so that i'll finish fast um, by god's grace we'll make sure that we hasten every activity before my coming up so that we can have time for the word sorry this is not a regular ministry and so you find out that there's no room for drama and all of these kinds of things praise the lord and and all the things we believe that days will come when we'll have time for that hallelujah announcements and all of these kinds of things praise the lord Tonight your life will change in a dramatic way. In the name of Jesus Christ. What I'm about to teach you will transform your life. Honestly, I'm determined this year to make sure by the grace of God that we all experience the reality of the rain. Let it not just be a song that will keep singing again and again and again. Hallelujah. We're trusting that God will really, really grant us grace. And so all the teachings that will be coming, please, I want you to pay attention, especially to this teaching. Hallelujah. I was talking to the Lord a few days ago about us, the house, and um, I really appreciated him for what he's doing. But let me start on this note. I'm a bit concerned um, at our pace of both spiritual progress and otherwise. Hallelujah. I am very, very humbled. I, as we travel around ministering the word of God, I am amazed, not, not necessarily surprised, but amazed at the impact and the transformation that this ministry and the teaching is bringing in the lives of people we, we receive testimonies, thousands and thousands of testimonies um, from lives. But then every one of them come fresh. They come very fresh and really impactful. Um, when we begin to share, maybe one day we'll have the opportunity to share some of these testimonies. And you won't believe the encounters, the breakthroughs. There are whole churches that play koinonia messages and just sit down under that anointing and get blessed and there are all kinds of miracles that have happened to people liftings encounters you know i think one of the greatest testimonies is the encounter that people have through the messages angelic encounters heavenly encounters they step into levels of the anointing and some of them have never been here never been here there are people there are ministries there are pastors that travel kilometers to come and so i'm a bit concerned that we who are here that god has granted us the privilege to directly sit down under this very heavy unction i am a bit disturbed as to why the pace of our growth is a bit slow um, and I, I began to ask god because i care about us i don't just care about myself left for me i am i am bent on working with god and receiving testimonies from that relationship but every true leader prides himself in the joy of the people hallelujah if only the leaders succeed we're the only ones getting blessed and prosperous and lifted and anointed you know and god is expanding and increasing our influence Many leaders will rejoice at that, but my joy is to see that as we rise, everyone who sits under this anointing becomes a first-hand epistle of the vision. Hallelujah. 
So I'm a bit concerned, honestly, I am. Um, not necessarily worried, but I began to ask the Lord because I know that the problem is not with the quality of the word. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we may not be the best, but I think we have done well in bringing the word of God in due season. So I, I really began to talk to the Lord about it. I expect 10 times the results that we see in our lives. There are people who are afar off. Never seen me, not even my picture. Some of them have had just one message, just one encounter, just one. There are people who have just one koinonia message, just one. Koinonia teachings are so powerful, it doesn't matter which of them you get. You produce the same thing. Even if it's on marriage and what you need is healing, it doesn't matter. Just get that atmosphere. Hallelujah. And so I, I really, I want us to take, we are, not, we are not playing games. Praise the Lord. This is a real ministry. We are very disciplined and serious with the assignment that God has given us. There is a revolution going on in this nation. And I can tell you with all humility that we are contributing significantly to the spiritual renaissance that God is doing. Especially in the lives of the generations that are coming. I am humbled by those who have access to these teachings. I have met kings. I have met politicians. I have met nobles. I have met people who my level of life would never have afforded me to meet all on account of the grace of God and what he is doing. Praise the Lord. And I expect that um, those of us who are sitting down, please volume, directly under this anointing, we should be able to walk first hand. Many of us have access to me. There's counseling sessions. Even after the meeting, we can. Even if it's a handshake, a hug, whatever it is, you sit down directly under the worship, under the prayer, and all of that. And, and so, it is either one of two things. Number one, either you are not really interested in pursuing this reality of the divine life to be at work in you. Hallelujah. Either there is a direct negligence or there is creeping in subtly the danger of familiarity hallelujah familiarity is a disastrous thing it has a way of destroying you hallelujah praise the lord one time reverend dr umar Pai shared a touching testimony many years ago i heard him preach and he said that um, his brother and the brother's friend needed a miracle and it was, it was a financial miracle. They really needed a miracle from God. And the brother went to him and said, um, can you give me some money? And he said, you're my brother. I can't deny it. And he gave him some money. But the friend came and said, man of God, I really need a miracle. And he prophesied and spoke to the person and said, your bands will never run dry. Two people, same need different results hallelujah there is if your life does not change under this unction i guarantee you something is wrong with your approach god is in this place hallelujah i was humbled by the testimony of our dear sister and um, it doesn't take too much to see the hand of god it just takes you being disciplined and follow instructions the problem with many of us is there is this spiritual stubbornness. You know what we call I too know mentality physically. See, it's a, it's a foolish thing when you don't have results in your life and you keep arguing with the words that come. Hallelujah. Have you seen students like that in class? Their CGPA is low. They are not doing well. Yet they argue with the lecturer again and again. And then those who are very serious, those who are exceptional, they sit down diligently. There is an attitude. Look, let me tell you. The ball is in your court. You have to choose. You see people changing. There are people who are changing. There are testimonies that are coming. You are the only one who is left. You can choose to argue it 
and watch sick people get healed and watch God change the story of people. Look at people. Oh my God, look, let me tell you, if I begin to share with you some of these testimonies, hallelujah, very humbling testimonies of the hand of God. Hallelujah. We are too small to doubt the might of God. Do you know how far God can take you, brothers and sisters? Forget about your age. Look, if you want to receive from God, I'm speaking to especially many of us who are students, you must remove this student mentality and bury it and, and, and know that you are only a student for a few moments. Many of us, this dependency mentality has crippled us. You have graduated for five years now, but you still believe Koinonia is not a fellowship. Koinonia is an apostolic and a prophetic move of God. It's not some kind of campus thing for just young people. Hallelujah. Please be determined that there must be an evidence in your life. Hallelujah. There must be an evidence in your life, brothers and sisters. And this is, this is my goal. I cry before God every time I pray for us. And I say, Lord, please let your people, even if it means not blessing me, no problem. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy, that's what must happen to you. My status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. One more time, prophesy to yourself. My status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. On my way. On my way. To better days. Prophesy, you're on your way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. To better day. To better day. To better day. Sing status is changing. Come on. Status is changing. The word of God is doing so something to you. We're on our way. There is a better tomorrow, I tell you. Forget about today. My status is changing. There's no more decline. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way. We're on our way. On our way. That's the destiny of this ministry. To better days, we're on our way. On our way, on our way. On our way. On our way. On our way. To better days, to better days. We're on our way. On our way. You can choose to take the flight or not. But I tell you, God is going somewhere with us. To better days. Prophesy to yourself. It's part of the meeting. We're on our way. That His glory will change something in your life. I'm on my way. To better days. To better days. To better days. We're on our way. On our way. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. Hear me. It doesn't take time. It just takes having access to the keys. It doesn't take a lot of stories and discussion. There is what you can hold on to. When you catch it, you have caught it. It will change your life. Men will talk. They will only talk for nonsense. You will only be moving like a star that cannot be stopped. But the question is, are you willing? 
it's not enough to just listen there is no situation you are in that is the worst in the earth there are people in a worse situation but this word has taken them out of it and honored them it may look like there is a delay but you must tell yourself the glory of god is changing me this is already a word for somebody tonight you may not look like it brothers and sisters forget about it your status is changing there's no more decline you're on your way to better day let them laugh at you today your status is changing your status is changing no more decline there's no more decline you're on your way you're on your way to better day prophesy to yourself my status is changing spiritually financially in every respect no more decline on my way I'm on my way to better day I'm on my way I'm on my way I'm on my way I'm on my way To better day Now pray and say Lord give me focus Help me to settle with the world Whatever distracts me whatever distracts me whatever is robbing my life i'm ready to be a student i'm ready to submit myself go ahead and pray i'm ready to lay down my pride to get what works i'm ready to submit myself i'm ready to lay down my pride i repent from arguing with the word give me the key so god let my hands handle them. Pray. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I lay down my pride. I lay down my pride. I submit to the word of God. I lay down every argument. Every vain talk. I submit to the word. I want to see results in my life. There is something I do not know. Show me, oh God. There is something that connects me to the next level. You are changing the life of others. Don't forget about me. I am willing. You are changing the life of others. I am willing. You are changing the story of others. I am willing. I take my eyes away from my failures. I take my eyes away from limitations. I take my eyes away from criticisms. I am not stiff-necked. I am not stubborn. I am malleable to your word. yes lord i submit to your word it has changed many it has produced champions and generals I'd like you to see your future and prophesy. I'm on my way. Oh, they will hear my voice. I'm on my way. They will see his glory upon my life. I'm on my way. To better days. To better days. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We submit to your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
please pick up your Bible first John chapter 5 verse 4 God bless you let's get straight to the word there is a lot to talk about first John 5 verse 4 please pay attention if you are here sit down sit down sit down God bless you please look up everyone before we read that scripture I expect everyone coming for koinonia to at least buy a book like this praise the Lord all these pieces of papers we have that we throw powerful revelations on it get something like this please pay attention just be a student for a while and let the world honor you forget about pride please I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ young and old rich or poor whatever you when you come to the presence of God just follow instructions your next dimension is in the instruction you follow. Hallelujah. Don't be too, don't do big manism before God. For the kingdom is for children. Get a notebook. Get a good biro. Don't come around if, if, if you have devices or phones that you can, you can, you know, record and write very well. Do so. Don't just sit down and be careless. When you are inviting others, let them know that they are not just coming for fellowship. Hallelujah. If you love them enough, buy it and give them. Buy it. There are lots of jotters that we get from wedding. Free. Huh? Instead of writing your problems on it and writing all the people that hurt you, why don't you bring it, sow it as a seed to somebody? Get this. This is my own notebook. There are many others like this. It shows that you respect what God is teaching you. In the book of Revelation, when John saw everything, he told him, write. He didn't say, think about it. He didn't say, crime it. He said, write, for these words are faithful and true. When prophet Elisha was passing and the Shunammite woman perceived that this was a holy man of God, when they decorated his room, they kept a table for him there so that he would write. The ancient wrote, you must write hallelujah please when you come that's why we have time to say hug one another when we say hug hug when we say sit down and listen no loitering around walking around pinching this is is demonic it's not just bad it's demonic i'm telling you this is the spirit of distraction your mind cannot do too many things at once hallelujah when the word is coming, that's when you remember that, oh, I, I need to do this. I need to do that. Somebody is pinging you. You are pinging the person. It's demonic. Pay attention. Hallelujah. Please, inside and outside, even if you don't have a seat, pay attention. Somebody is smiling and telling you, have you seen their uniform? Tell the person, please, don't distract me. I'm tired of my situation and my life must change. Don't distract me. If you say it once, you won't repeat it again. But by the time you start entertaining nonsense, in the middle of something powerful that should liberate you, the person will say, can you imagine? Was it uh, that we How much did you even say it? This is not the place to discuss all this for God's sake. Of course, we appreciate ourselves. But if you don't place value for the word, it will never change you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First John chapter 5. You will thank me tomorrow. You may not like me today, but I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Many are already thanking me. And those who didn't listen are now listening in a painful way. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come. We open hearts, oh let the ancient words in First John 5 verse 4. Everyone read is projected. One, two, read. And this is the victory that overcomes. What is it? Even replace our with my. Are you ready? Read it one more time.
even my faith hallelujah hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 tells us that the just shall live by faith hebrews 10 verse 38 media you have to really help us today let's see how we can rush i want us to finish on time hebrews 10 38 it says the just shall live by faith in fact frankly speaking four times in scripture it is recorded that the just shall live by faith but i'll just speak to hebrews 10 verse 38 hallelujah it says now the just shall live by what faith but if any man draw back draw back in what in living by faith it says my soul shall have no pleasure in him the just shall live let me interpret it for you the quality of your life here on earth is dependent on your understanding of what faith is and how it works and this is what i'm going to be teaching you tonight what faith is and how it works the operation the dynamics that's what i would have taught last week but i was away and and the holy spirit told me no you must teach this my people need to hear it because they need to understand not just what faith is but how it works true bible faith that will produce results for you habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 4 it personalizes it in a very powerful way i love the prophet he said the just shall live by his faith not your neighbor's faith habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 he says behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him but the just shall live by what you will prosper by your understanding of faith you will step into the anointing and the glory of god the quality the measure of the glory and the grace of god you will see in your life is dependent on faith there are there are free seats here please let it be a tradition from now that every time we begin the service if there are people standing some people should sit on their seats there is a vacant seat here there's another one that i see i don't know why there should be those seats there are people standing outside please ushers you should know that let's let's occupy all the seats please hallelujah the just shall live by his faith everyone say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works one more time say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works praise the lord the subject of faith is very important for the christian experience um there have been many teachings on faith many many teachings in fact it's been the core teaching in many christian circles but there are a lot of misunderstandings about the true operation of faith and i trust that god will help us to be able to balance it i want to go really straight to the point and that very very fast hallelujah it's not that our regular or popular teachings on faith are wrong but many teachings about faith please look up many teachings about faith are not complete faith is an equation faith is a formula are you following me now and the components must be complete for it to work here and there different men of god preachers great men and women of god have caught certain dimensions of what faith is and how it works but to be able to give it a very balanced scope such that it works for those who practice it is where the problem has been hallelujah let's look at a few um a few incomplete revelations of faith that have come to the body of christ number one or some corrections on the imbalances number one it has been popularly taught that faith is believing no that's not it at all faith is not just believing that's the point I want you to get. Be, to believe is very important. 
is part of the equation of faith but it's not all there is to faith you see that for somebody straight up this is your deliverance because you have been taught that faith is just believing if you believe that's all no sir i can tell you this categorically that's not the whole equation Belief talks of conviction. Belief talks of persuasion. When you believe a thing, it means that you are convicted. It means that you are persuaded. But it does not mean it to produce for you. Please, let's understand that. Belief is part of the process of manifesting faith, but not all of it. It is part of it, but it is not all of it. Please get this revelation. Oh, I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Wonderful. That's only a step. That's not everything. Many of us, innocent believers, have stopped there. Believing God is not enough. Belief talks of your conviction. It is part of the overall equation. But it is not all of it. Number two. Faith. Faith. It's not just confession. Mm. Body of Christ. Faith is not just confession. I'm dictating it so that you will write. Confession is part of the process of manifesting faith. But not all of it. Please you must get this. Confession. In the equation of faith there is a point where confession comes in. But that is not all there is to Bible faith see that many of us have been taught by well-meaning people through the years in our different christian circles across this nation and for those listening outside of this nation and all of that we've been taught that all there is to faith is just speak when you speak it you have it no sir i tell you the truth from god's word and from this bible no sir it doesn't happen that way are you getting blessed hmm. so faith it's not just confession. You must realize this. If confession were all that there was to manifesting faith, I guarantee you there are people who would have been living like angels in the earth today because there are people who speak. I'm not against confession. There is a place. Remember in our teaching, spiritual laws. There is a place. Confession activates. There is a law of speech and sound. But that's not the only law. So it is true that confession is part of the process of manifesting faith. But not all of it. So believing is not all of it. It's only part of it. Confession is not all of it. It's only part of it. Number three. Faith is not just sowing seeds. Faith is not just sowing seeds. Many in the body of Christ have been taught that faith is equal to seed sown. No, sir. Sowing of seeds is also part of the equation. It's activating the law of seed time and harvest. But that is not all there is. You see the imperfections. So when I camp around believing, on one side we have those who believe. Just believe. And if you really believe, it happens. That's not exactly true. Hallelujah. Or confess. And if you confess, that's all. No, that's not exactly true. Or sow seeds. The moment you are trusting God for a house, you sow a seed for that house and go and rest and it happens. No, sir. No, sir. There is an equation. God is not a fraud star. Are you getting my point? That, those kinds of attitudes make God look like a 419er. Right? Right? And this is the reason why many people write against men of God in newspapers. They call us all kinds of things. They call us money mongers. They call us uh, metaphysical people. They call us talkatives because the incomplete teaching. See, let me tell you something. Especially for those of us who are men of God here or will be called into ministry. Realize that the church is an institution. Both a spiritual institution and a social institution we influence culture we shape people the mindset in nigeria has largely been altered through the church for good now 
Are you getting me? Nigeria is said to be the most religious country in the whole world. And this is because of the presence and the influence of the church. There is a place that the church is playing in nation building. And, and that, that puts a lot of pressure on the man of God. Because what that means is when you mislead people, it will create a ripple effect. Right? There are some of you, as you come and sit down under this anointing, as you hear the things I preach, you take them, some of you verbatim, back to your fellowships, your members, because you believe you want them to receive the same result. And that means I must be careful. If I teach you error, it becomes harder to correct it when it has left me. Are you seeing how error grows? Because when you go now and you are communicating to your churches or your groups or your fellowships, it may not be exactly as I said it. It will be based on what you understand. Right? By what I said. And so, the, the error keeps multiplying as it goes down the line. That's why we pray in the spirit for accuracy of utterance. So that we can communicate only that which is consistent with the mind of God. Are you blessed? So faith is not just believing. Never forget this. Number two, faith is not just confession. The word confess comes from the Hebrew word homologio. It means repeat as you have heard. So there is a place for that. The law of sound. The creative power of spoken words. But that's not all there is. Now I understand that there are times that we men of God take this aspect fragment by fragment. And, and I understand that. That's not what I'm talking about. There are people who have taken this in koinonia. We have examined all of these aspects in details one by one. And that is just for understanding. But when it comes to manifesting faith, you must be able to piece up all the fragments together. Are you getting my point now? To complete the equation. Otherwise, what you are doing is not Bible faith. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Faith is not just about sowing seeds. Otherwise, what difference do we have with those who just give charity around? There are unbelievers who sow cars, sow houses. Is that true? Faith is a law. Never forget this. Faith is a law, meaning it works anywhere it is accurately practiced. When it is released anywhere. A law is not something that is territorial necessarily. It's a principle that works anywhere it is diligently practiced. Salt is salt in Nigeria. Salt is salt in Bangladesh. Salt is salt in Israel. Salt is salt in Ukraine. Salt is salt in the Bahamas. Hallelujah. A gun is a gun in Nigeria. Right? A gun is a gun in Israel. What a gun can do in Nigeria, it can do in the UK. That's how faith is. It's a law. So write very quickly. The principles of manifesting the faith that works. The principle of manifesting the faith that works. I'm being very simple tonight because I really want us to get this. This is very core and foundational to our understanding and our success in life. The principle of manifesting the faith that works. Let me have two people, please. Any two people? Come. Please watch this. Stand here, Benga. You stand here. Promise. Watch this. Why is faith very important in the life of the believer? I want you to watch these people. This is... Hold this. This is God wanting to reach out to man. This is the blessing. Watch this. This is the breakthrough. This is the healing. This is the prosperity. This is the new level of grace. This is the insight. Are you getting me? And here is man. God so designed it that there is between God, his desire to bless you and down at your end, your desire to receive. There is a law that connects that. That law is called faith. Are you getting me now? 
Faith is important because it is the biblical platform that authorizes God's power to come into your life. Faith is the platform that authorizes God's ability. My brother wants to see the power of God and it's not like God's ability is crippled. Lord, I want prosperity. Lord, I want healing. Lord, I want a miracle. Take me to another level. I want to begin to have encounters in the spirit. This is it. This is it. Fully paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right? And this is another imbalance that preachers say. The fact that a thing has been paid for does not mean it comes to you automatically. Is that true? I can pay for something and tell you when you go to the supermarket, it's paid for. But that does not mean it has been delivered automatically. See that? Faith. Faith is what connects you. Watch this. This brother is standing desperate. Oh God, would you not change my situation? 10 years, 15 years, nothing has changed. He is born again. He believes in Jesus. He believes Jesus died. He's a tongue talker. Maybe he even pays tithe in church. So seed confesses the word, but nothing is changing because this connection. Are you seeing it now? God is asking that you authorize him. There is a connection between the power of God and where it is needed in this earth realm. Faith. Are we following now? Between you and that breakthrough is your ability to connect. Are you willing to authorize the hand of his majesty? He wants to come. Make no mistakes about it. God wants to reveal himself as a loving God. The love of God compels him to want to bless us. But the problem is that we have not been taught how to connect. Stretch your hands, promise, and connect this. This is faith. Once you lay hold on this, then there is, there's no limit again. There are many of us, thank you very much, guys. God bless you. And I don't know what they were thinking about. They are thinking, they are always thinking in partition. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's why I gave the example from beginning so that your, your desires will not be disappointed. Praise the Lord. Could it be, brothers and sisters, that where you are, where your family is, is not just because the devil is so powerful. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not just because you may not be praying correctly, but maybe you have not been taught. There is nothing wrong in not knowing. The problem is when you are not willing to learn. Hallelujah. Faith is the platform. Never forget this. This is why we need faith. The platform that authorizes God's ability to be made manifest in a person's life. God needs an authorization to step into your life because he gave man willpower. When he said, let them have dominion, it became scripturally incorrect for God to interfere with man's life just like that. No. He needs an authorization. That's why the Bible says in the book of Revelations, it said, behold, I stand. And what? And what? This is God speaking. Why will he be knocking? Wouldn't he just step in and say, I created you. Open that door whether you want it or not. No. Behold, I stand and knock. And I will keep knocking for as long as you are willing to open it. Tonight, may we authorize God to step into our lives. And you will see how small many situations are. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, the faith of God is at work in me. So what then is this equation of faith? How does it work? Now that we know that faith is not just, um, I would define faith at the end of the teaching, but that the workings of faith, we have little bits and pieces of it. So here and there we confess the word and we seem to have some consolation, but nothing major happens. Here and there we sow seeds, very good. But then that's not all there is. Here and there, we, we um, do what again? We are convicted. Oh Lord, I believe you. Are you not the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? God says, yes, so I am. Huh? Are you not the one that parted the Red Sea? God will say, of course. Why are you not parting my situation? 
God says, allow me, authorize me, authorize me. That's why the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. I repeat, the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life, meaning I don't do anything. All I have to do, after all, I was a sinner. You are the one who died for me. I didn't ask you. Now that you have died for me, make sure that everything goes well. Give me tea. Give me bread. Do everything for me. See that? And there is an imbalance of the grace message that if not careful, stretches to that limit. Where it tells you God should do everything for you. No, sir. There are two dimensions of grace. Let me say it very quickly. I've listened to a lot of great mess, grace messages by different men and women of God. And I agree absolutely with them in many aspects. There may just be a need for some little adjustments here and there. Who's that? What's wrong with her? She's sick. Huh? Who brought her? You came with her. Hold her now, protocol, and let her talk. Huh? Please hold the mother and let the lady come. Come, you. You can hold the mother. What's wrong? Her kidneys. Hold on, please. Where are you taking her? No. Bring her. It's a spirit. Bring her. It's not that she's restless and she wants to go out. It's the spirit. That's what happens to many people when they come for miracle service. Once I come up, you see them restless. They say, I'm going. It's a spirit. How long has this been? Huh? Can she talk? Mama, how are you? How long are you? Her brother, how long has this been? Her kidneys are what? Renal failure. Shika, you believe that Jesus will change all this? As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. Time. Come on, sing. Imagine this were your mother. Jesus. We believe. Jesus. There is Don't cry. In your name. Don't cry. In the name of Jesus, the anointing is on all of you, all three of you. Right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cause this devil of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. I command brand new kidneys right now. Mommy, brand new kidneys in the name of Jesus. I cause that devil of infirmity. I see you in the spirit. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Renal failure, I cause you by the blood of the eternal covenant. I curse you. 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 Hallelujah. Mama, look at me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am healed. I am. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am. I am. Look at me. Everybody leave her. Leave her alone. Come. Come. Help her. Come. Help her. Hold this, please. Help her. That devil is a liar. Please put this in. Walk. Come. Leave her. Don't hold her. Just guide her. Come. Come. 
Just turn around, turn around. Help her, turn around. Come. Kidney failure, that devil. Is. Look at, she's happy. Look at what is happening. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come. That devil is a liar. Let her come. Let her come. Help her. Just guide her. Let her come. That devil is a liar. Lift your legs, mama. Go ahead. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. In the name of Jesus. Listen. This is witchcraft. Your mother would have died on Sunday. They would have told you this woman is dead. She would have slept like that and woken up. Because as I looked, I saw the spirit. And I was looking, I said, what is this? And they were carrying her out. Look, it's better for them to come and die here than to get up. We are not playing games. This just came to prove the teaching. I'm about to say some other things. You must believe. They, they believed God, but they didn't stop there. They would have stayed in Shika, and this woman would have died because I see in a vision, Sunday, they would have said it's over. Huh? Don't cry. Don't, don't cry, gently. In the name of Jesus. Mama, I assure you, you will come back and stand here to give your testimony. That wicked spirit that has been tormenting you. Huh? Go and look. Has she been eating? She has not been eating. Because the Holy Ghost is ministering to me that Mama is hungry. Find something for her to eat. God bless you. Take her. Lift your hands and let's bless his name for one minute. Please sit down, sit down, sit down. Let's hurry up. Let's continue. Sorry about that. There is a spiritual strategy for manifesting faith. Just like we saw. I don't know how long our mother has been, but in seconds, you can authorize the power of God. See, I already sense the healing anointing. So as you're listening to me, if you are sick here, this is always what happens. Because when once, one miracle happens, the water is stirred, right? Very important. Brothers and sisters, listen. It's not like these guys could not have prayed for mama there is nothing special about me this is what i want you to understand the goal i know some of you are saying i don't agree there's just listen to what i'm telling you you know you know as i preach i i discern your thoughts i know what you are agreeing with and what you are not agreeing with Hallelujah. The equation of faith. Let me give you an equation of faith that if you practice, I guarantee you are touching the integrity of the maker of heaven. You will be shocked at what your life will become. It will begin to produce immediate results for you. Immediate results. Hallelujah. Pray in tongues for one minute as we prepare to receive this. We are hurrying up. Please take it serious. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Don't just hear. Don't just look. See. Rabati shelama hariyaba la kaparusa pratigede baladaba. Inside and outside, pray in tongues. Participate. Rapata baladaba kata pratigede balade bos. Kaprati shela pratiya. Kata baladaba kaprande gede balade bos. Open our eyes. We submit to you, Great Spirit of God. Open our eyes. And this is the faith that overcomes. Even our faith. This is... Number one. The faith of God that produces results in your life always starts with revelation. Bible faith 
please hear me always start with revelation you can never manifest true faith until there is a revelation a revelation the first piece of the equation of faith is revelation and there are two dimensions to revelation please look up the first is study 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 and the second is meditation you don't have revelation just by wishing study it first starts by searching out you cannot have faith in what you do not know i love this baby come ah she's afraid she's going to run to her mother now <laughs> may god bless one one of these days our children will open the service for us all of them will just hold the mic and blast in tongues for 10 minutes oh yes many of them pray in tongues at their age you didn't even know whether but but god is doing a lot of work in our children hallelujah praise the lord let's continue revelation so it starts with diligently searching everybody say diligently searching now the problem with many believers you cannot spend your life just reading newspapers chase magazines name them all those kinds of rubbish and expect to have bible faith even if there is a column where a man of God quickly shared something, faith doesn't come that way. Brothers and sisters, there is an investment you must make in studying the word. Look at me. This is your promised land. You must walk through it. Every time you read the Bible, it's like you are walking through your promised land to see what God has given you, to see what has been apportioned to you. So as I study this, I see, halabakatayada, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that i do he shall also do greater works than this as i study i begin to see if ye be willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command thee this day right that you'll be exalted above all nations and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you are you getting my point when you are studying the Bible, imagine that you are walking around your land of promise. When you study the Bible, you are seeing the things that have been paid for. Are you getting my point? That cancer is killing you and you take the Bible and you search. And you see where he hung on that cross and he said, it is finished. But that has not entered you. You are aware remember you are getting revelation and this is only the first part that's why i'm telling you what many people call faith is not faith so i begin to walk around the promised land like he told abraham he said from where thou art lift up your eyes and look eastward northward that's what you do when you begin to study it's like you are walking through your land of promise brothers and sisters you may be soaking gary just walk through the land you are you are no problem there is no stove to boil the indomie break it as you are eating walk walk you think i don't know how that thing works don't be fooled by what you see there is a testimony of the transition of faith see that i was sharing with a lady that once upon a time i used to buy bread and cut it and put granite there's a way you arrange it so that with every bite you know the whole surface area is covered you push it in you are not the first to do it so all that insult you've been insulting god you said look there are people who did not even have the bread right and god brought them out of it so he will, he will bring you up we just sang that our status is changing but it starts as i walk through the land of promise Everybody say the word of God is my land of promise. Say one more time, the word of God. I know tonight's teaching is very simple, but don't trivialize the power of it. The word of God is my land of promise. Ha! So I study, brothers and sisters. See, as I'm, I, I feel like just sitting down to start studying the Bible. As I'm just talking to you now. A weak person 
a non-entity. Nobody knows you. But when you walk through that land of promise, you are already engaging something. You may not understand. There's, I'm not denying the, look, I'm not denying the fact that you are in pain. Don't get me wrong. Faith does not deny what is happening. You see that? Aha. Uh -huh. So if I'm sick and I say, I have headache, it's not negative confession. No. Please. If you want to say you are well, say you are well. But if I'm sick and I tell you something is, is pinching me here, it's not lack of faith. Are you getting my point? Many of us have felt so guilty. We don't even know when you are serious, when you are saying the real thing or not. You say, bros, can we get 20 naira? I say, I'm rich. You say, no, no, no. The issue is, you know, if you don't want to say, okay, there's nothing exactly in the pocket. Please, don't feel embarrassed. Don't make it look like the word of God makes you a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't just speak anyhow and then things change. Speaking is a law. The Bible says a curse causeless shall not stand. Are you getting what I'm saying? So don't just say if I speak anyhow, whether I believe it or not, something happens. Be wise. That's why we are growing. Praise God. Study. So I walk through this thing. Look, let me tell you how I study. Let me show you how I study. I don't study foolishly. I study strategically. Everybody says strategically. My goal of studying the Bible is not to cram scriptures. There are real needs on ground. Cramming does very little in helping you produce results. I hope you are aware. You can cram Genesis to Revelation. The part you truly act out in faith is the part that works for you. Is that true? So I write different aspects of my life that I want to see the glory of God revealed. I write ministry. I write my finances. Are you following me now? Different aspects. And I begin to walk through the garden of the Lord. My promised land. Finding out what God's idea. What are his promises? What is his? What does his word have to tell me about this? How far can I be anointed? To what limit? The problem is. You see the reason why the devil kills your word study life right see when the devil wants to destroy you there are three things he just attacks it's very easy number one he kills your word life number two he kills your prayer life number three he kills your corporate fellowship life when these three are dead you are finished it's as simple as that just three things you want to go and study and all of a sudden that lukewarmness notice Ladies, you've read novels that are two times larger than this. But to read just three or four pages, that's to tell you there is a devil that does not want you to see something. Are you getting my point? I can give you a storybook and you can read. Many of you have gone to the library. You have gone to different things. There are many people who in your place of work, you are given tasks that require you reading voluminous books and you do all of that within a week but how come when it comes to studying this you thought it's because the letters are small you brought you bought large letter edition it's still is big there is a there is a spirit hallelujah everybody says study it starts there let me not deceive you brothers and sisters faith is not cheap if you understand this, you will respect everyone who walks by faith. True Bible faith starts the encounter of the word. When you study, you find the promises. When you find the promises, the next thing is meditation. Everybody say meditation. It's still part of getting to the point of revelation. I'm trying to break down how faith truly works. Say meditation. What is meditation? The word meditation as, as it, it's not just to, to speak aloud. The word meditation is the process that makes a revelation become your own. You see that? Okay, now you are studying. He told Peter, for instance, cast your net to the right side. How does that story relate to your situation in Zaria? Meditation. Meditation begins to draw out the spirit of that word. It begins to personalize it. It's in the place of meditation that some of us even have encounters. 
real encounters while you are meditating under a heavy unction you can sleep and then you have a dream in that dream you can have encounters some of you can see men of God some of you can see people and that thing crystallizes your conviction you get up and hold that scripture and say I caught this see that when when there is meditation the end of it is conviction the whole goal of revelation is to bring you to a point of conviction another word is persuasion I'm showing you how Bible faith starts persuasion persuasion if you are not persuaded you cannot finish the equation because you will doubt on the way so you must strengthen your persuasion before the journey begins hallelujah you don't believe in tithing you just did it because your pastor laughs at you and say look you have not been paying tight I'm, I'm watching those who are standing I'm working in the same office with you it's, it's me that pays your salary eh? and, and you get angry and you get afraid and so just to please your pastor you just squeeze your envelope and frown and stand and you lift it up let him see you I'm dropping it now you won't be blessed that way that's mechanical I never do things until I have the revelation for them it's painful to do a thing without having the revelation you'll be trying to copy others and after wasting your time you won't get their results don't be hasty in doing anything get a revelation hallelujah do you spend time meditating let me tell you one of the greatest key to meditation is silence many of us are too noisy for the word of God to become alive in us is God speaking to us there are times in the night late in the night I just carry a chair and I go outside and I just sit down no noise all the noise makers are asleep and I just sit down and I'm just praying in tongues thank you Lord Jesus sometimes I could just carry worship is not noise you can have that faint atmosphere of worship and you're just sitting down all of a sudden a scripture like an arrow will fire into your spirit when you share it with somebody you'll be disappointed that they don't jump at it the way you jump because it's a revelation to you have you ever shared a scripture with somebody and said my goodness my brother you are slapping your head while you are talking say ah is it not last week's coin on your and you live there so sad and disappointed don't be disappointed they are life to those who find them to those who find them it has become your revelation now you are ready to move to the next level are we following now so the equation starts with what number one is revelation and on that revelation it takes study and meditation when a revelation has truly entered your spirit it will bring conviction listen I've said it again and again and let me repeat it revelation is not knowing what God has said that's study revelation is knowing what it takes to make it work in your life hmm. number two the second dimension the moment conviction and persuasion is there you believe it that's where many of us stop but that's not all there is let me shock you the next dimension to the equation of faith is prayer and i'll tell you why it's not just acting it's prayer listen to me i'm telling you what works prayer when you catch a revelation the next thing is not to run you will miss something major this is where a lot of people miss it are you getting it now when you catch a revelation brothers and sisters the next dimension is prayer an investment praying in tongues i beg you in the name of the lord jesus christ if you are not filled with the holy ghost with evidence of praying in tongues real fluent spiritual tongues given by the holy ghost content for it we are more than ready to minister to you here hallelujah the holy ghost has settled this issue of tongues or no tongues in the body of christ you are the only one who has not had the revelation it's a done deal it's a settled thing the advantages of praying in the spirit is, is beyond any denominational barrier, whatever it is. 
What does prayer do to you? Two things. Prayer reveals the strategy. It's not enough to know what God wants to do. There is always what you must do to commit God. Prayer is where you get the strategy. Hear me. It is not every place in scripture where the condition is verbatim. There are some situations that are customized to you. Let me give you an instance. You now read how Jesus healed blind Bartimaeus, right? Or how God opened the womb of Anna. I'm a, okay, well, I'm not a woman. I wanted to use an example. Of, <laughs> praise the Lord. Now, but imagine that there is a woman who is buried, unable to take in. And now she begins to meditate, seeing the ministry of fruitfulness all in the Bible. All the scriptures that God has placed for fruitfulness. And all the barren women in the Bible who God opened their womb. She's studying. And in it she begins to find spiritual keys. Are you getting my point? What they did. It does not mean you just, you can stand up. Your situation may not afford you the opportunity to do exactly what they did. For instance, some people left to Jericho. Where is your own Jericho? That you, are you getting me? It is in the place of prayer. The Holy Ghost gives you your customized strategy. Are you getting my point? Two things happen in prayer. We are, we are a praying ministry. See, you must be a man of prayer to appreciate what I'm saying. If you don't pray, it won't make sense to you. As you begin to pray, the strategy comes. You can't obey until the instruction comes. Are you getting my point? Strategy. So I begin to pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, a crowd is packing full here. How are we going to get another venue? And I'm praying, humanly speaking, there may not be another venue. Lord, we thank you. What are you saying? And I begin to study the wilderness ministry of Jesus. How did they manage the crowds? What did they do? But we are not in the wilderness. So I need a rema. Are you getting my point? Prayer is what brings the spirit of the revelation. And then you will hear a word for you. Sometimes you can be praying. It is in the place of prayer that you get the customized revelation. And then two things happen. Number one, I told you, you get the strategy or the instruction. The second thing is you receive the grace supplied for obedience. You can never obey God until grace is given to you. Because some of the instructions that you will get from the place of prayer will be too hard. Some of the instructions may be empty your account. Some of the instructions may be pray all through the night. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Some of the instructions may be make sure you come and buy water here for three weeks. All kinds of instructions. That's why he not only gives you strategy, he releases the grace. Many people try to obey without the grace. This is the two-part dimension of grace that I want to explain to you. There is the dimension of grace that brings you into the finished work of Christ. And there is the dimension of grace supplied to you to obey, to actualize it. Right? It has been paid for, but you need grace to ensure its delivery. Someone's situation is changing. So you see that you prayed, you believed it. Oh, a job is coming. Makatala, ba, 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 ba. I found that revelation where Jesus, the, the master, told them, he said, why sittest thou idle? You see, you have to search. Lord, I'm jobless. Uncle, give me a job. You will, you will be frustrated forever. All those uncle and did things. Many of us have never paid attention to this other option. You just hear it. But why don't you go back to the word of God? Lord, I don't have a job. Holy Spirit, guide me. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God, who, who searches the mind of God, begins to reveal to you. And you find that parable, for instance. You find the parable where Jesus was sending people into the vineyard. Is that true? And he met some people and said, Why sittest thou idle? Is that not a scripture now that relates to your situation? True study. There are Bible concordances. There are Greek and Hebrew Bibles. There is Bible Gateway. There are many Bible softwares that ease your search. Huh? Scriptures on joblessness. Google. Enter. And scriptures come out. 
No, no, no. Look, don't laugh. Except you don't want a job. And you bring them out. Some may make sense, some may not make sense. Just scan them. And you find, you don't need plenty. It may just be one. And now you are getting that scripture. Watch this. When you get that scripture, you meditate. Lord, open my eyes. What made the master to call them? Was there anything on their part that they did? Is there something in between the line in this story that my eyes has not seen? Hallelujah. And you get it so God is able. You see, the might, the revelation of the might of God begins to down on you. If God gave these people jobs and he paid them salary, it means I can get a job and they will pay me salary. And you begin to pray. The moment you begin to pray, don't just get up and act and say, yes, I've caught it, application. I hereby write for a job in this company. You must give me. What grace is sponsoring that, 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 that religiosity? That's religion. That's why you open the office and they'll say, what are you saying? You say, I want a job. They say, walk out of here. Do you think? And you, and you now live disappointed. You went with a lot of zeal. God is good. He has done me well. And, and now you are there and, and you are disappointed because you did not finish the equation of faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The next thing you would have done is to take that revelation to the place of prayer. The threshing floor. Where your customized unique instruction is given. Somebody's breakthrough is already happening to him. Because God is showing you the missing link. It will work. And then I begin to pray. This is how I do with koinonia messages. I play the messages. And while the messages are playing. Because there are some things that I said by the Holy Ghost. The man of God is preaching and Joshua Selman is listening to him. And while he's preaching and praying, and I just hear something. Once you hear it, you are ready to act. Because the moment an instruction comes, that instruction can still refer you back to the Bible. Right? It doesn't just mean that you see an angel with wings. You can hear it and then an instruction will come. You can be praying and say, Lord, change my situation. As I go for koinonia, change my situation. And while you are praying, Lord, I believe you will change my life tonight. And while you are praying, a scripture just come. Jesus told the lepers, go and show yourself to the priest. You see that? That's a revelation that would have not made sense in a normal day. But to you, it is God's remnant to you. And the Bible says, as they went. What, what does that mean? It means you should stand up and go. See that? And as you go, you commit the integrity of God to perform. So prayer reveals the strategy and it also supplies grace. Because there are some instructions, especially financial instructions. Some of you, you, have not, you are not givers. That's why it, 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 you don't get... There are some people here who are reckless givers. If you are a true giver, you know that you need grace. It's called giving grace. Because you are crying and saying, Lord, change my situation. Lord, I leave this 10,000. Something must happen. I don't have an uncle. I don't have an auntie. My father is dead. My mother is dead. I don't have anybody. I didn't have the opportunity to go to school. You are the only one I have. And Lord, if you do not help me, I have seen in the word of God that these are the situations. And God says, take now thy Isaac, that son. Are you a fool? You are about to go and use that money and at least even buy a Bible with it. And God says, I know it's a Bible you want to buy. Forward match. Sometimes God can tell you to go and sow it into the life of somebody you don't love. You can't pretend you didn't hear it. See that? But in that instruction, you are now ready to obey. That's the last final phase of the equation of faith. Prompt and complete obedience. Please write. Number one is revelation. Number two is prayer. Number three is prompt and complete obedience. Having all readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Prompt and complete obedience. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Please let's hurry up. Let me tell you something brothers and sisters. This is the hardest part of the equation of faith. Settling down to study is not the hard part. This is the labor dimension of faith. 
are you getting me this is where you labor in the spirit it says if ye be what and not willing and desirous not willing and hungry if ye be willing revelation makes you willing but obedience the hardest part this is the link brothers and sisters this is the consummation of the faith equation no matter what else you do that you call faith if you do not obey it is not called faith hallelujah confession sowing of seeds only become potent when we are willing to obey when we are willing to obey everybody say obedience i have found out that this is the link between where you are and where you need to go brothers and sisters obedience is not child's play obedience is hard work that's why you must receive the grace in the place of prayer lord i know you are about to speak and i cannot pretend that i'm not hearing you so grant me the grace that when the instructions come may they not be too heavy yes 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 that's all i'll say to him yes Yes. 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 I'll say yes. That's your link to the next level. Yes. When you hear that instruction, it means your season is about to change. Are willing to obey no power in existence can stop you from going to the next level i give you a, a guarantee listen your obedience is what judges the devil obedience obedience oh i feel the anointing of the spirit i'll hurry up so that we we'll pray brothers and sisters obedience obedience we are going to look at one case study and then we'll support it with a few. Isaiah 51, please, quickly. One and two. Let's hurry up. Isaiah 51. Let's look at a man who from the Bible is called the epitome of faith. Isaiah 51. Hallelujah. Verse 2. Everyone read. It says, look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him and I increased him. That means God is giving you a case study. He's saying now that you know what faith is. Look at a biblical portrait. Understudy his life. And you will find therein the keys. So let's study Abraham. Genesis 22. Quickly please. Our first case study is Abraham. How did God turn an idol worshiper? A mediocre in a small land called the awe of the Chaldeans. How did he become so prosperous? How did he become the father of faith? Hallelujah. Verse 2. It says, and he said, watch this. Okay, let's go to 12, verse 1 and 2, then we'll come back to 22. Genesis 12 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible, do you know that the person who was supposed to carry this, this fatherly mantle was his father? terror it was not abraham terror missed it through disobedience and the bible says now the lord had said unto abraham get thee out of what are you seeing now so we see that an instruction came what was the instruction get out don't ask questions just move 
he says, get thee out of thy country from thy kindred father's house unto a land that I will show you. He said, if you do this, here's the result. I will make of thee. Many times we caught the part of the scripture and just start claiming, I will. no, there was an instruction. Faith is a response to an instruction. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Next verse. Verse 3 now. Help us media. In Jesus name. Please walk together. We have to really rush. Okay, no problem. And then he finished all the blessings. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee and in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. When will that happen? When will that happen? What was the first instruction? Get out. Abraham would have remained there and he would have died an idol worshiper at the all, at all of the Chaldeans. He got up and began to move. Go to verse 13. Chapter 13, sorry. Chapter 13, not. Chapter 13 from verse 1. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had and lot went with him into the south abraham took a step and he started moving lord said i'm going with you for joining in the obedience alone the man became blessed are you getting me now lord was not part of the covenant like ruth held on to who naomi she was not supposed to be part of the lineage she said nowhere not going anywhere. Oh, prophet, thank you. I'm, I'm leaving. Who said, no way. Your obedience is my, whatever you do, I will do. 22 verse 1. Here was a test. The instruction was going to come for that promise to become real. At this point, Abraham had begun to experience some, some kinds of things. Liftings and all of that. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt. The word tempt there is test. Abraham and said unto him Abraham and he said behold here I am verse 2 and he said what take your son we are understanding Abraham Abraham did not just carry Isaac he would have slaughtered his son for nothing with no blessing attached you move as instructed not as you wish either instructed by the voice of the spirit or the principles of the word is still the same we have been taking steps out of our wishes and not out of the voice of God. It says, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a bond offering upon one of the mountains, which I will show you. Verse 3, may that be your testimony. Read the first line. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Everybody say prompt obedience. Delayed disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure. When God speaks to you, stand up. The moment you sit down there, that grace gets exhausted and you find out you no longer can stand up. God told you to sow the seed. At that point, because it was in the place of prayer, you could do it. He said, wait, later on. When you came, you now calculated how much? 120. Hey! What did I hear like this? In the morning, you even said, it's even 200 I will give. But something has happened. See that? Or go and lay your hands on the woman in Shika. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going. I know that they are used to seeing me just as a brother. But I'm going as instructed. And later on, you just say, let me quickly just go and greet uh, Benga. And see whether he has prepared lunch. After the lunch and everything, you get up. And your mind starts telling you, yourself, they have already called you stupid. Even before you behave stupid. Now, by the time you go to the hospital, what if they drive you? What if something happens to the car? I say, oh Lord, I'll just intercede. After all, it's, it will soon be time for prayers. You see, when, the, the beauty of grace is you take advantage of it immediately. The grace for obedience must be maximized promptly. He rose up early. There is a reason why the Bible tells us that. Remember, we're understanding Abraham. He rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and so on and so on and so forth. Uh, let's go to verse 5. Verse 5. Okay, verse 7. 
He said, and Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, my father, and he said, here I am. He said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb? The son didn't know he was the lamb. Next verse, please. Let's hurry up. And Abraham said, my God shall provide a lamb for his bond offering. So they went up together. Verse 9. And they came to a place which God had done this and that and that, and he bound Isaac. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth. Makalabo kataya. His obedience was about to be complete. Do you know if he did not leave that knife, everything he has done is multiplied by zero. It's painful when you start your obedience and stop. You've paid too much price. Why don't you finish it and, and commit God's integrity? Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, lay not thy hand on the lad, neither do thou anything to him. He said, for now. See that? For when? Not when you left your house. Not when you were at the base of the mountain. For now. I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son. In other words, you obeyed me even unto death. The blessing follows. 13. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and beheld a ram caught by the thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it at a bond offering instead of his son. 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Are you seeing that now? Jehovah Jireh, you are singing it. Jehovah Jireh. Uh -uh. Don't just sing. What did he do that made that a revelation? My God shall supply all my needs. True. According to his riches in glory. But according to your obedience. To the instructions that will bring that riches. 15. And the angel of the Lord called out of Abraham. Called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. And said by myself. Come on now. This is God stepping in. When your equation is complete. Satan was not mentioned here. It was a deal between God and he said by myself. I have sworn. Because thou hast done done not said not confess oh i will kill isaac in the name of jesus isaac you are dead in fact it's not that you are dying you are dead it's nonsense if there is no obedience he said and has not withheld thy son 17 he said that in blessing i will bless you and in multiplying i will multiply you as the as thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sun which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall what possess the gates of thy enemy please i want you to make up your mind beginning from today that obedience will become the watchword of your life this is bible faith obedience in joshua chapter 6 just write it i will not need to go there the walls of Jericho. I want to show you. In fact, when you go to Hebrews 11, the Bible begins to give us the archives of men who did exploit with what we know called faith. And you find out that for all of them, there may be variations here and there, but one common thing is that they all took steps when a word came. They took steps. Jericho. In Joshua chapter 1, the Lord began to speak to Joshua. He said, as I was with my servant Moses, so I will be with you. Right? He said, only don't be afraid, be courageous, and so on and so forth. And, and you know, he looked at all of them. Now, watch this. God had told him he had given him Jericho. But if they just went, do you know they would have killed them? Please, learn this. Never obey. Just try to obey without prayer. Involve God. You will get the unique instruction. That's where the power lies in the word, in the instruction. Hallelujah. When Joshua went to pray in the night, what happened? The strategy was revealed to him. So on one side, you will take Jericho, but there is a strategy. It's a strategy that was never used in the Bible for anything again. It came as a rema. And he told him, he said, walk around. That's the strategy. You walk around today and it may not walk until it is a rema. But he walked around seven times right and on the seventh day he went seven times and he said now tehila let there be a shout that was a strategy other times he told jehoshaphat he said put the worshipers in front 
and let them begin to sing and say you are good and your mercies endure forever that's the strategy for you your strategy may be come for counseling god can tell you there is an anointing you will receive and it will change your life write your name for counseling even if there is nothing just come that's a strategy for someone else the lord will say go on a three-day fast in the three-day fast i will speak to you and you will catch a light. are you getting what i'm saying so you see that many of the things we call faith is not faith it's not faith it's just metaphysics the widow in zarephath first Kings 17 from verse 7 to 16 just write it will not turn there for time's sake remember what happened god commanded elijah to go to zarephath there he will meet a widow and watch this he came and he met a woman in a state of lack and insufficiency she needed to put her faith to work but she could not put her faith to work until a word would come and the prophet said bring me water the woman would have said water for what water for what and she took the water and as she was bringing it he said also bring me a morsel of bread and she said honestly sir this instruction is so much he said just do this and the bible says when she obeyed her faith was released and she saw the supply are you seeing in scripture that all through the hallmark of faith is obedience in my opinion there is one word for faith obedience that's it one word obedience if you do not obey the word forget about the manifestation when we're about to start koinonia i went to the lord because the lord had shown me in a vision but where I saw in a vision, I could not relate with any physical place. And then I was, my mind had a lot of options here and there. But I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I know that you are able to do this. All I need is a strategy. And I was praying, praying in the spirit. Just lying down and worshiping. And all of a sudden, I had CGC. The Lord spoke to me. And I said, Lord, I don't even know the people here. How are we going to get access to the place? And the Lord told me, I've gone before you. You see, you don't need to do anything. Just stay there. The word has come. And see where we are today. The product of faith. It will work any day. It will work any time. One time I was praying and I said, Lord, how do we do now? There are sick people and your people need to be equipped. And the Lord said, turn the last Friday of every month to become a special time to minister to the people. When the counseling was getting too much, every day i said lord what is what is this strategy and first we had moved to saturday and then the lord helped us to arrive who does counseling on monday by 11 o'clock does that make sense to you but that's what god said look brothers and sisters if he speaks start moving let your mind understand later on are you getting what i'm saying look at jesus i love jesus jesus looks at a man who is blind sir i am blind and then Jesus makes mud, right? Puts in his eyes and says, go and wash. Go and wash. Go and wash. I'm blind. If I could see, would I come to you? They let me. He didn't say, neighbors, take him to go and wash. He said, find your way there. Same thing Elisha told Naaman. Go and bath. See? You can choose to be arrogant about it. Or you can humble yourself and enter that water seven times and change your story. Naaman said, but then all rivers, the, the, the servant said, I'm walking with you. Soon I will leave you. Please, you better be healed so that this thing will be better for us. You are a liability to me. This and that and that. Go and bath. And he went, watch this. He went and started obeying. But nothing happened to his obedience was complete. Six times he would have gotten up and just gone with mud like a fool. A man who brought victory. Right? He would have just moved and say, ah, captain, where are you from? He said, well, one stupid prophet gave me an instruction. After six times, I said, come on, my pride will not allow me. Many of you started obeying. One step to see the hand of God, the devil brought you back. And look, nothing happened. One step. Some of you came for miracle service, for instance. And we said, in the name of Jesus, you shout that name, Jesus. And you just stood and said, I beg, Jerry. 
People were just shouting like fools and you were there. And say, ah, everybody was getting blessed, getting healed. Instructions. Instructions. The secret of true faith. When you get that word, obey. The truth is we have not been obedient enough. And this is why we've not been seeing it. Look at the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus took the bread, blessed it and did what? The bread did not multiply in the hands of Jesus. Did it? No, sir. He gave them. He said, go and start sharing. Go and start sharing. Look at the ten lepers. He told them, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. And they went at that word. The Bible said, as they went. Not before. As they went. He says, this sign shall follow. Not go before. You have to take steps. A miracle always comes or the miracle always comes after the instruction or condition is met. Never forget this. The miracle always comes after the instruction has been obeyed fully. Yes to your will Lord. Yes to your way. Oh, oh, oh yes lord i will obey yes to your will lord yes to your is defined as the action you take based on your conviction of God's word and in line with the instructions required by God right faith is the action you take not the desire to act the very action you take based on your conviction of God's word and in line with the conditions or instructions required by God. If you do that, you have manifested what the Bible calls Bible faith. Otherwise, you will just be playing games and talking games. I told the Lord, whatever you demand of me, I will do. I was in Abuja and um, one of my very nice shoes that I love. I was polishing the thing to package it and the Lord told me this shoe goes for so 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 person. Someone sowed a very major seed into my life and as soon as I received it, God said, now you are an usher, pass it to so 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 person. Years ago I would have cried but I've grown. Mm. Because every time his instruction comes, that's my status changing. That's it changing. Hallelujah. Last year, when we were starting Koinonia, the Lord said we should carry all the seed in the house and sow everything. Everything. The whole money. I told the finance department, I said the Lord has given an instruction. Pack everything. Ah. If God has told you you will marry a man of God, start praying for grace. Don't just say when. Pray for grace. Because you are, the man himself is, is enough to be a ministry for you. A true man of God is strange. Right? You wake up and see a man roaming like a zombie in your room. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Honey, what's going on? I'm okay, it's alright. And you are wondering whether you are the one who is going as a sacrifice or not. Listen. You will never receive breakthrough beyond the level of your last obedience. Never. 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 Don't reject the instructions of God. Every time you search the Bible, look for conditions, not just promises alone. What are the conditions tied to them? Hallelujah. I sowed that seed and in less than two hours, more than 1,000% of that seed came into my life. Hallelujah. 
crazy instructions that God has given me. Crazy instructions. I remember when I traveled to Canaan land as the instruction of the Lord. I went with a seed and I went there when I was done outside in the public, not in one small corner. The Lord told me, go on your knees on that ground. And I went down there. I've shared the story. You know about it. I've shared with you how the Lord instructed me to give everything. Everything. Hallelujah. I carried my Isaac. Dragged it into the church. And came and placed it on the altar like a fool. Don't want any man's glory until you can obey the instructions he obeyed. What you need to pray for is Lord grace. There was a time the Lord instructed me. I locked myself for three days non-stop. My eyes did not see the sun. Did not see the sun. Because the Lord said so. No sun, no food, no nothing. The only thing that I did was to take my bath. And that was because the bathroom was inside the room where I stayed. No nothing. Are you willing to obey? If ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. I told you about how I trekked from the roundabout in PZ. Right? At the instruction of the Lord. The roundabout in PZ. I trekked to aviation. Praying in tongues. Jekatata lakataya. I take this city. Mambrotosute lakataya. The keys of this city is given unto me. Don't you sit down and see people coming and think it's just because I'm a young man. It's not charm. When you obey him, his integrity is committed. Who is God speaking to tonight? Stop grumbling and complaining. Cry and say, Lord, what is the word for the next level? Because if he gives you that word, you will rise to that. Hallelujah. I remember someone who one time, his father was sick. And he played an instrument for from night the lord gave him an instruction to play an instrument from about 10 till about 6 in the morning he said just play that instrument non-stop and that guy was worshiping by the morning the father was healed look at me the arm of the lord is not too short koinonia are you hearing me there are pastors there are people we like miracles but we hate instructions we hate instructions my life moves at the pace of the instructions of the Lord. Instructions of the Lord. I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday. I saw one suit that I like. New suit. They just showed it to me. And the Lord showed me the face of someone in protocol. Ah! I said, oh God, this is going. I called him immediately. I said, where are you? I said, come quickly. This is for you. And he came and I gave him. He was surprised. I said, bye bye. Before any unbelief will enter and I'll collect my team back. Go. I love you, Jesus. That was from the Spirit. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Oh, it takes faith to move mountains, brothers and sisters. I love you, Jesus. There is no instruction I will not obey. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Listen. It says through faith, they subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They shut the mouths of lions. He said, what more can I say? For time will fail me to speak to you about Gideon and Barak and Jephthah. Ordinary men who obey God to the latter. Sister, when you obey God, that man must come. It doesn't matter where he is. Forget about witches and wizards. Concentrate on your obedience. Concentrate. There are some of you, God told you, Drag your family members and bring them here. The word came with the grace for it to happen. You say, Master, we have toiled all night. There are times God can use a man to speak to you. 
They tell you, go and listen to relationship and family life. I've listened to it before. No, no. Remember, you are responding to a word. Don't forget. He may tell you to do what you have always done. But this time around, there is an anointing upon it. You will do it and see very seemingly crazy instructions. God can tell you, just sit down on these drums. And just be playing and clashing the cymbal and praying it. Don't do it. Do it. If you are ashamed of men, forget about greatness. You will never carry certain levels of the anointing. I went for six hours in Joss, standing at a Renhard Bonke Crusade because I was desperate. And, and I set my gaze on that man because there was something I wanted to land on me. I was not sitting down asking stupid questions that people ask when they go to places. Ah, this man, this white man, why is he wasting our time? Is there Rema or no Rema? That was not my, I was at my, my, my face was set like a flint. Brothers and sisters, listen. Wait, the financial prosperity series I'm about to preach, I truly believe it will cause a revolution. There are new things that the Lord has shown me that I put my hand on my head. I say, my goodness, Joshua Selman, where have you been? Your life must change when in the season of the rain. Obedience is the platform. Don't blame anybody. Take responsibility. There are only three prayer points tonight we are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Sorry about the time. We are really working on beating the time. But I want you to pray. Begin to thank God for the word tonight. Begin to thank him for the word tonight. It's time for new levels of grace. New fountains. New levels of impact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray. Prayer point number one. Lord, help me and give me a receptive spirit to hear your instructions and to see your conditions as demanded by scripture. Lift your voice. Please pray seriously. This is the time to pray and not walk around inside and outside. Let our spirits be open, O oh God. That as we study, may we see instruction. May we not just see promises, but conditions. Your level is changing, I tell you. Your level is changing, I tell you. God is not a man that you should die. He's not the son of man that you should repent. Lord, I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I'm receptive to your instruction. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen. There are conditions tied to you walking in divine hell. There are conditions tied to influence and increase and honor. There are conditions tied to prosperity. There are conditions tied to longevity. Find out. We have preached these things. Our messages are full of these keys. Prayer point number two. Lord Jesus, speak to me. Speak to me. I'm ready to obey. Speak to me. Let your word supply grace. Reveal the strategy. Pray. 
Show me the key to the next level of breakthrough, to the next level of influence, to the next level of encounter, to the next level of the anointing. Through dreams, through vision, through the written word, through prophetic direction, instructions will come in messages as you walk. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number three. I want you to pray this with all your heart. Cry for a fresh supply of grace for prompt and complete obedience. Some of you, God has given you instructions. There are seeds to sow. There are places to go. There are tapes to listen to. There are encounters. There are retreats to have. You have not obeyed, so you will never see his glory. Lift your voice and cry. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this. It is after you obey that you can now begin to confess. And then you can now sow a seed and tie a seed to it. Except if the sowing of the seed is the instruction. Or that if I'm believing God say for a house and I find out God gives me an instruction. Go and get an architectural design and see the kind of house you want. That's an instruction. Don't sit down and start giving foolish arguments. Now I go and I say, Lord, I found what I wanted. God will say, go and estimate. How much will it cost? Now you, co you estimate and you say it will cost 15 million. <laughs> you are sitting down. All you have home and abroad is 500 naira. Forget about it. And Look, the blessing is in the instruction. It's not in what you have. Whether, you, you, whether it is 1,000 or 1 billion, it is still faith that will bring it. Hallelujah. And now you begin to pray. And while you pray, God will say, relax. He said, don't worry. Just relax. It will come as a seed. You have heard the word. You stand still. And you begin to prophesy. Or God will say, now go and sow a seed for it. Or you want to get married, for instance. And, and, and you are praying and you are thanking God. You are saying, Lord, thank you for this. And then you find out God gives you an instruction in the place of prayer. Maybe go and wash the plate. Go to one woman who is already married. It may even be your friend. He said, just go on a Saturday and help them sweep and wash their plate. That's the instruction. If you are too ashamed to do it, forget about marriage. It may be crazy, but go and do it. After you have done that, then you can now begin to prophesy. And you can now connect with a seed. And say, Lord, I sow a seed into this. And I speak. My marriage is coming. The man that God is bringing, like our sister said, is a blessed man. He's a godly man. Your obedience is complete. Something is wrong with your family. Your husband or your wife is misbehaving. And all of that. You don't sit there and say, me and you will enter the same trouser. What has entering the same trouser got to do with, with the solution? 
You don't need to enter the same trouser. You need a word from God. All these stupid cultural things that we put, we must enter the same trouser. And do what? Is it going to solve the problem? Get a word from God. Where you are confused, come for counsel. This is the situation. What do you think? What is, the, what is the scriptural mystery? What is the principle that is responsible for the delivery of this? Right? That's why we pray. That's why we come here all the time. We are dispensing mysteries. As these mysteries are dispensed, it's falling on different people. You catch it and you walk with it. It has changed the lives of people from nothing. It has taken people to wherever they go. The Lord is showing me a vision. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a vision. I'm seeing a vision and in this vision, I'm seeing chains. This is what I'm seeing. Before I even start the mass prayer, I'm seeing chains. And those people are affected. The power of God is going to begin to come upon them, inside and outside. I'm seeing chains. This is the spirit of delay. I'm seeing delay written in the atmosphere. Delay. Delay. I'm going to begin to pray. Listen, there are people whose lives and destinies have been held bound by the spirit of delay. By the spirit of delay. No matter where you are, inside or outside, it's like a force, an energy of the spirit. I want to help those people outside here. Lift your hands. Just keep your hands lifted inside and outside. Just lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands towards you. And as I stretch my hands towards you and begin to speak, it's like fire. The power of God will begin to come upon such people. Those who are outside, you can stretch your hands just over your, your various projectors. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That spirit. I speak to you in the realm of the spirit. You have held the destinies of men and women. You have held the destinies of families. But the Bible says upon Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance and holiness. And the sons of Jacob will possess their possession. Therefore, I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus and I speak every spirit of delay right now, right now, right now. I stretch my hands by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I stretch it right now. Bring them out. Say, yeah, of multiplied grace. I stretch my hands. The angels of the, of the Lord are moving. Row to row, row to row, row to row, it will get to your turn inside and outside. Row to row. If that's not your situation, it will not affect you, but you will never stand the power of God. If this is one of the reasons God brought you here, right now, I stretch my hand outside. Lift your hands, the angels of the Lord are moving. Lord, every row, every row, I keep my hands stretched. That devil of delay, you must leave. You must leave. You must leave. The second overflow, God is touching people there. The second overflow, like fire, is coming upon people. The second overflow. That spirit of delay. Your time is up tonight. Your time is up tonight. Maka para to sotosh. Embrekete leko sheketa. There's a lady wearing white hair tie. The anointing of the spirit is causing that delay. That delay right now. That delay right now. Right now, right now, right now, it's a spell, it's like a charm. I'm seeing it on the heads of people. 
I command that spell, that charm of delay. You must leave. You must leave. You must leave. Shakabakata, shakatakata, shakatatete. I tell you, no spirit will stand the power of God tonight. No, you must let them go. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I come against you. I come against you. I come against you. Delay is a dangerous thing. It traps your life so that when you ought to move and make significant progress, it will hold you bound. There are many lives and destinies that are tied down families please lift your hands the Lord is telling me that he wants to visit the root of witchcraft in families pay attention to what I'm saying because the power of God will move in a mighty way there are families here hear me you love God, but you do not know what is at the root of the tragedies of the families. There are spirits, there are covenants, there are fraternities with darkness that have kept families bound. It may not even be your fault. You are inheriting the wickedness of men. But tonight, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. 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 As I speak over your life. Again the Lord is going to be ministering to families. It may not have anything to do with you as a person. Some of you. You will step into visions. Immediately. And begin to see a lot of destruction. And havoc going on. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying right now. Inside the first overflow, the second overflow across the road, every family that is under the influence of any satanic manipulation, Lord, you will not only identify them, they must be free. At the count of three, I want you to shout, I am free. Are you ready now? One, two, Three. Altars. 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 I call you by your name and I curse you by the God of heaven. I call you by your name. Altars in Benway State. Altars in Kogi State. Altars in Kaduna State. Altars in the West. Altars in the East. My goodness. Every local government. Every state. I set fire on those altars. Fire. Fire, fire, fire on those altars. Fire on those altars. Every covenant with the waters, every covenant with the air, every covenant with the earth, every covenant of darkness, tying families. I declare that this is your time of jubilee. I send the word of judgment. I send the word of judgment.
Hallelujah. I wish the Lord can open your eyes to see the mighty things that are happening. Mighty things that are happening. Hallelujah. Listen. Something very strange will start happening here now. Listen. Listen to me. Because I just saw a vision like a bunch of keys. It just dropped on the ground. Listen. This, this is a sign of access in the spirit. The Lord showed me a vision. And I saw in the spirit a bunch of keys. Now it's not for everybody. But I'm about to pray. Once it comes on you. Except God did not call me. You will see doors open. It's called breakthrough. Lift your head. I stand under this apostolic anointing. And in the name of Jesus. Every destiny. That needs this breakthrough. At the count of three. Receive it. Receive it. Take it now. 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 I distribute those keys in the spirit. I distribute those keys inside and outside. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the blood of the eternal covenant. Breakthroughs. 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 The opening up of destinies. The opening up of destinies. The opening up of destinies. Shekabakata Labatosh. Shekete Katababa. Kaparato Shokotosh. Embrekete Lekotoshata. Listen. Those of you outside, I want you to hear me. Because the Holy Spirit is going to do something now. The Lord asked me to come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want count three. My goodness. There is such anointing in this place. And I see the angels, the Lord. The moment you count three, I'm going to start moving across this crowd. And the power of God will start falling on people. Whatever has locked your destiny, it must open it right now. Are you ready now those outside please believe we are not playing games father in the name of jesus may the angels move in this crowd in the name of jesus at the count of three shout at one two three receive it right now right now right now right now right now i stretch my hands as i move across let an anointing come as i pass your role as I pass your row, you will stand it. As I pass your row, an anointing, an anointing. Take it, 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 take it now. I stretch my hands. Take it, take it. This side, receive it. Take it now. 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 I stretch my hands. Take it now. Take it now. Everyone in this row, receive it right now. Receive it right now. Take it now. All those here, there is an angel of the Lord standing on your row. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Just allow me to pass your row. As I'm coming, there are angels walking with me. As I'm coming, the power of God will touch you right now. I stretch my hands here. Everyone here, right now, take it now. Take it right now. Take it right now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands to you. Call this man, come. This big man, come. What's your name? Come now, let's hurry up. What's your name? The Lord is saying, what's your name? Daniel. Daniel, from where? From Edo State, sir. From Edo State. I mean, are you in Zaria? In Zaria. You are in Zaria. I want you to rejoice because you have entered a new level this night. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As you celebrate them, you connect to their prophecy. Listen, because I'm seeing you in a cage. This is what I see. 
I've not started prophesying yet, but I'm seeing you in a cage and I'm seeing you telling the Lord, I know that if I come here, my situation will change. In the name that is above all names, I lay my hands upon you and I end that captivity right now. Take it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is grace? There's someone grace around here. Who is grace? I'm hearing that the Lord is showing me someone grace. Who is grace? Please come quickly. Let's save time. Come. Where is your mother? Zango. Zango. Is she sick? My sister is sick. Don't worry. Is your mother sick? She doesn't even know she's sick. But she's sick. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord going to your house and healing two people. Your mother and your sister. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your mother and your sister. What do you do? You're a student. What do you do? Huh? Applicant. Job applicant. Do you believe that if I pray for you, the Lord will give you a job? Will you come and testify before God's people? I lay my hands upon you and I release that job for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. From this road down like this, there are a number of ladies with abdominal pain. Because I'm seeing like the angel of the Lord is doing something. I stretch my hands right now. Whoever they are, the power of God is coming upon them right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that pain, that abdominal pain must go. It must go right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let me try to walk to the first overflow. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. You will start experiencing the power of God in your life in a very strange way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I lay my hands upon you right now. Step into a new season. I want to pray for this overflow. There are so many people. Please believe God. Don't think I've come outside because I want to identify with you. So you don't think you are at a disadvantage. No. Distance is no barrier. Some of you are enduring cold. It's touching my heart. Talk more of the heart of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And some of you need to watch because what you are seeing me do is what you will be doing in some years to come. So just watch it. You are just receiving miracles. There is an impartation. Joseph. Who is Joseph? Here. Yeah. Joseph. I'm hearing a name, Joseph. You are wearing like a collar, like for cold. Who is that? You are Joseph. The Lord is going to do mighty things through you. Stand up. There's cold so you don't enjoy yourself. Are you hearing me? I want to stay true with God and watch God do great things in your life. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing two old women. They are sitting on the same seat. Where are they? Here, this row. Two mama like this. Where are they? Is there some... Who is that? The Lord is asking me to talk to them. Just leave them. Mama, do I know you? Have we seen before? I'm looking at you. Can, can they... If they cannot hear, we can speak any language. Can I talk to you, mama? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing the spirit of death over your head. When I, don't be afraid. I'm seeing the spirit of death over your head. And the Lord is saying, if we don't pray for you, that's how you'll be getting up and a bike will collide with a car. It's like a station wagon and it will kill you for nothing. But the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. The second thing is there's no finances at all. Everything flat. Is that true? Is that true in your life? Is what the, why you came? Where is your daughter? Do you have a daughter? Huh? I'm seeing a lady close to you like a, a, I don't know if she's a, a daughter or a logical or not because I'm seeing the Lord is saying that he wants to bless her with marriage you are the one okay you are the one standing close to her are you ready to marry because God is going to surprise you do you believe that huh? say I, re I receive I receive you are not you are, you are trying to be a lady but my dear prophecy you see a madman like this i'm only responding to god just out and see what the anointing does shout i receive as loud as i receive jesus christ i break that curse over your head mama you will not die all of you here stretch your hands to her and say mama will not die take us your mother pray for her mama will not die in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah I'm looking at this other mama. I don't know what's wrong with this woman. But there are three things I see the devil want to do. 
Number one, eyes. Ah. Huh? But two, I'm seeing her inside a coffin. They have already closed it, and there's blood on top of the coffin. Are you hearing what I'm? Somebody used her eyes to make money with it. This is what the Lord is showing me. I'm not a prophet of doom. Me don't like what I'm saying, but I cannot but say what God is asking me to say. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm seeing a lady here. I'm, I'm still going to come in, please. We're trying to work with the time. Um, but I'm seeing a lady here. How you will know is the power of God is about to come upon you right now. One of the ladies here. This is witchcraft that has destroyed the life of your family. And the Lord wants me to minister to you in this other overflow. Father, wherever she is right now, locate her. The power of God is going to come on one lady right now. It will be like fire. You can't stand it. It will come upon you. Please, when that happens, let me know that lady right now. Not just those inside. I know God is... Inside, but this row, this row, Father, wherever that lady is, I'm declaring right now by the anointing of the Spirit of God that she will be located so that her can be free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, your name means joy. It's a tribal name, but it has joy. It's like it. Who is that person, please? Your name means joy. That's if you translate your name, it has something to do with joy, joy or joyful or something like that. Do we have someone like that? Please make sure you are telling the truth so that it doesn't look like we're acting. If, if you are that couple with the protocol, who is that? What's that? Come. What's your name? What I means what? Child of joy. I want to pray for you. Where is your mother? She's in Kaduna. Is this working? Okay. Tell your mother her time will lay hands on you. And I want that if you go back and see your mom, just ask her to allow you to break through. My hands upon you right now. I don't mean their English names are Joy. What's, what's your name? Yo, from where? Your name is Yah. All of you, your name is Joy. Okay, I'm going to name you. Let me talk to you. Come, my dear. Where is your family? Kaduna, I'm going to pray for you. Because that has tied your family down. I look at me, look at me. Does it make sense to you? The Lord is dead because I'm seeing your family tied down in witchcraft. And God is saying that He's lifting them up by His grace. Father, let it end right now. Out of this family, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on all of you. I lay my hands on all of you. I lay my hands upon you. Help her, please. Help her so that she Who is that? In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. For you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Please hold on. There is a lady wearing white scarf. She's on at the wall. She's leaning on the wall. Where is that lady? Please bring her. I'm seeing in a vision. There's a lady wearing white scarf. White scarf. Is there someone like that? You are leaning on the fence. White scarf. Who is that? Is there someone like that? Give God a praise. Who is that? What's your name? Favor. But there's nothing favorable in your life. And the Lord is saying, change her story. Do I know you? That your name is Favor? I want to pray for you. Do you believe if I pray for you, the Lord will grant you favor? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. I restore favor to you right now. I restore favor to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Come, my dear. This lady, yes, come. Hallelujah. There is an anointing. Listen. There is an anointing. Um, I promise those of you outside, by the grace of God, hopefully by next miracle service, We'll try to work on amplifying the sound so that it will 
it will be very clear for you outside all right i know that the people did their best but you can see that the crowds are increasing praise the lord but there was an anointing that was upon esther it's called the favor anointing in the course of the meeting i'm going to be praying for people but the lord is saying i should minister this to you do you believe it huh father in the name of jesus i lay my hands upon this lady and i release this grace upon her in the name of jesus i release this anointing upon her in the name of jesus i release this anointing upon her in the name of jesus who came from Kano? i'm seeing Kano. come you are not alone you are with one lady where are you huh two of you husband and wife come did you tell me you are coming come she's your friend who is she how are you my dear you came from Kano. what do you do i'm see I, I, no you are not just a student there's something else you are doing i'm teaching you are teaching how about her witchcraft is what god is breaking now in the name of jesus christ because i'm seeing something like a chain leaving your friend i command that chain to leave right now in the name of jesus christ i lay my hands upon you and i i command that chain to go in the name of jesus christ and for you i declare you will step into a new dimension of intimacy with god that's what you need you have been praying who fasted help him you fasted that god will give you an anointing it's not an anointing for ministry, it's an anointing for fellowship with God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of 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 Jesus Christ. Name of Jesus Christ. Look at me what has happened to your music ministry that's what the lord is saying i should tell you huh do you sing sing something let's hear my god is awesome he will move the whole world what has happened to your music ministry god gave you an anointing you have been playing games with it come because god wants to restore that fire as soon as i pass you i saw i saw i heard like music and god says restore his music ministry there are three things that can destroy a man's ministry any ministry one pride huh two women or men or anything just human beings are you hearing what i'm saying and then number three is premature exposure when people don't stay with the spirit to create a track record but i'm going to pray for you huh you, your characters you, you must you must behave well behave like where you are going are you hearing what i'm saying this is you, you need a lot of restoration in your life it's not because anything is wrong you, it's just that you need to step up otherwise you will not experience the grace of god but there is an anointing upon your music ministry and i lay my hands upon you right now you step into that level in the name of jesus christ all of you here please lift your hands i want to pray for you please lift your hands and believe As I pray for you and I count three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. There are people here under yokes and spells. As soon as you shout that name Jesus, the anointing of the Spirit will move through this very overflow. This very overflow. I wanted to leave, but God is still speaking to me about this overflow. Please, I want you to believe. Help them so they don't fall inside the gutter. Father, I'm doing as you have instructed me. And I prophesy right now. That as they all shout the name of Jesus, let the power of God visit the foundations of every family represented here. Are you ready now at the count of three? One, two, three. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, help them, right now. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit. I curse that spirit from your life and your destiny. There is a, a man that appears to one lady here. As I pray for you now, fire is coming upon you. You will never see that man again, not in your dreams. I command him, go, 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 go. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you deliverance. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit it never comes to you again never 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 in the name of Jesus greater strength greater prayer fire greater prayer fire greater prayer fire in the name of Jesus the lady with the black hat tap that lady for me look at me stretch your hands where you are an anointing is coming upon you right now beauty for ashes says the spirit beauty for ashes I release that anointing upon you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ before I leave this place there are seven people the spirit of prayer is coming upon you right now seven people Lord where are they right now right now across this place seven people it's like fire to come upon you some are men some are women take it take it take it right now take it right now the spirit of prayer the spirit of prayer the spirit of prayer 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 the spirit of prayer like never before tap this lady for me the Lord is visiting you and he's wiping your tears in the name of Jesus the Lord is saying he's wiping your tears by the power of the Holy Spirit the Lord is wiping your tears in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is wiping your tears let it end right now let it end now now never to return to you again never to return I stretch my hands all over this room right now right now right now right now every force of darkness never returns in the name of Jesus there is a spirit I'm dealing with I know what I'm seeing right now right now I judge you by the God of heaven right now let them go let them go let them go now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing the hands of certain people tied here like a chain holding your hands those of you here just lift your hands don't worry once it constants you you cannot stand it father visit them right now you will feel like literally fire on your hands a chain is breaking right now I stretch my hands let it break 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 now 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 let it break I break it by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost now I break that chain in the name of Jesus I break that chain in the name of Jesus I break that chain in the name of Jesus I restore your glory I restore your glory in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus please pray and ask the Lord to visit you pray and ask the Lord to visit you aha aha you must go in the name of Jesus you must go 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 any spirit represented here you must leave right now I tell you any force of darkness tying down your life Hold on, please. Hold on. Who is this, Mama? My brother. What's wrong with your marriage? This person I'm seeing was supposed to die October 21st. It's because of prayer. Because you used to carry this picture everywhere you go. I'm seeing you in a meeting. Stand up, madam. I'm seeing you in a meeting. No, no, no. Please. This is help her with a handkerchief. This is a mother. You don't have to cry, please. This woman you are seeing is a very good woman. I'm seeing you in all kinds of meetings. You are not even concerned about your own problem. You are lifting up this person because I'm seeing 21st October. He was to be to die and please, Mama, it's okay. It's okay. The Lord will help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because you too, you have problems. But you are not even concerned about your problem. You are not concerned about what is happening to your finances. You are not concerned about the pain in your back. You keep feeling pain in your back when you wait. As I enter here, I hear my pain go, just go away. The pain just went away when she came here. Look at this. Even before the meeting. From Kaduna, me and my... Hold on. 
Okay. I'm all away from Kaduna. We, my children sleep with your, with your scriptures. We work with your scriptures. Even if I will go and pass urine, the scriptures is on. The two of them are pastors. One is here. The other one is here. I finish university here in Ebi. That's this prayer. May we do? Oh, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> you have a ministry my goodness can you imagine i'm looking at you what is i'm seeing your ministry has something to do with spring the spring. The spring in the name that is above all names mama listen please don't cry the lord is visiting you because this woman you see is an intercessor this woman can stay for hours Praying for people who are not even is none of our business as the Holy Spirit ministers to her. You see, but nothing is changing in your own life. You pray for people and God will do miracles. It's true. Is that true? The Lord says, I should tell you your whole life would change. Amen. Hallelujah. Please come, follow me. Mama, the Lord is wiping. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is wiping your tears. Who is this? Huh? Ah, mommy, this is not your son. Hold on. This boy is not your... You are calling him son, but he's not your son. Because I'm looking at him and I'm not seeing a father. Where's your father? He's dead, sir. Father is dead. And this is what the Lord... I'm looking at him and I'm not seeing father. It's like the father is related to you. He's my elder. Brother. And so you took him as your son. That's why you are calling him son. But this boy is not your son. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ... The Lord is going to use you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is going to use you mightily. Huh? Mommy, you, God is wiping your tears because this finance, the thing can't just enter your hand. It will enter and go out. And we have to pray. Because the people that killed his father want to destroy you. And we have to pray. I'm not, I don't want you to feel bad. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's gone and but we are not just going to allow it happen until they come and kill mama. And it's because of the destiny of this person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is going to visit you in a way that will surprise you. What's wrong with him? You see, Ba, what the Lord is showing me, I'm not going to say everything here, but what the Lord is showing me, today, they will see that he has one sickness. They will do another test. Huh? They will do a scan and come out with something else. The devil is just playing, using medicine to play with your mind. This is witchcraft. They have already buried this person and this issue has finished. But in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm declaring and I'm speaking to everyone here. I stand under the anointing and I pray for you that every power that is tying down your family, it must leave you this night in the name of Jesus. It must leave you this night. It must go, 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 go. Go! The same thing, it must go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please come, madam. The Lord is saying I shall anoint you. Come. You are going to do great things for God. God is going to use you greatly. I know you may not think you are like that, but God will use you from today. I open your eyes to the realm of the Spirit. You will step into unusual dimensions of grace. I activate dimensions in your spirit. Elisha prayed and the eyes of the servant was open. I open your eyes to visionary encounters. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards our mother here. This woman's situation has really touched me. Come mama. No, no, no. Mommy, please stand up. Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. All the way from Kaduna. A woman with a ministry interceding for others. This is our brother. The devil wants to terminate the life of this person. I'd like us to pray over this picture and say in the name of Jesus. The same power that raised Christ from the dead. The same power that raised Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Mommy. Will you believe if I tell you you are stepping into an unusual healing ministry from tonight? Listen, you believe with all your heart. 
have you forgotten the dream god showed you where you saw yourself in a meeting praying for people i believe i saw it so i remember did you tell me is now is the time for that dream to come to pass because you had a dream you saw yourself praying for people i'm just praying healing them and you are healing them and you have been interceding innocently the lord is telling me that now is the time for your ministry to step into another level two areas the issue of barrenness the issue of barrenness it will be like a special anointing to destroy barrenness are you hearing what i'm saying you will come back and testify before the people of god this thing is being recorded and the second area the second area is hiv such an anointing will come upon you as you pray for people with hiv listen paul said i desire to see you he said that i may impart some spiritual gift it doesn't matter the age impartation can happen are you hearing what i'm saying madam hold my hands i want you to shout jesus and watch what begins to happen to you go ahead jesus. father i pray from today an anointing an anointing a transference of grace an ordinary woman will become a woman of power from today an ordinary woman will carry an anointing of the spirit in a strange way in a strange way go and heal the sick 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 in the name of Jesus Christ come madam look at me come watch this mommy lay your hand on him and pray for him just do what I'm asking you to do lay your hands and speak to him look at me you carry this anointing and you will wreck havoc in the kingdom of darkness anointing is not for show brothers and sisters but i tell you it will scare you this anointing will bring wealth to you people will sow into your life because of the impact in her life come on go when you go back lay this picture on your brother and pray for him god will take him out of that hospital and when he does bring him here and he will come and testify to the glory of God. The Lord told me he's wiping your tears. Come, sir. What do you do? What do you do? What did you study? I'm going to pray for you. You want to further? Yes, sir. That's what I'm yes, sir. Political science. Sir. Because God is going to use you in the area of leadership. It was in, in prayer God put in your spirit to study political science. Amen. Although what you studied, um, I'm not seeing a university like a college or something. College of education. Federal College of Education. You study something that has to do with education. Business education. Business education. But then it's leadership. And God is taking you to that position. When you study it, he will make you a great leader. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Wait, Mr. Man. Just wait. Let me finish. I'm praying for you. Make sure when God blesses you, you never forget this woman. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You never forget this woman. She has done what for you many people will not do. She has taken you as a son. She has spent her money to the last to help you. Is that true? If you forget this woman, God will not be happy with you. Let me use this as an encouragement. You see, when somebody suffers to help you and you rise, you will be a wicked person to forget that person. Some of us are like this. Some of our parents have labored to help us. Don't say, I must be a millionaire before I bless them. The day God gives you 20,000, you can take 1,000 and say, Mama, take. Some of us are very greedy. God is blessing you, but you are still latching onto the little resources of the parents. It must change. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, take him to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, I impart upon you wisdom and leadership. Occupy that mountain. Fire is coming upon your hands. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. Father, visit our mother. 
for what you have done mama my god will visit you in the name of jesus christ i pray for you from the depth of my heart my god will visit you in the name of jesus please bring this woman for me this one wearing this very one yes this she's she's not feeling fine something is wrong with her please let her come Is God blessing you tonight? Who brought her? Please, who brought her? If you brought her, please come with her so that we we'll know what it is. There's no mind. What's wrong with her, Mama? Diabetes. Diabetes. How old is she? Do you know? Oh, you just met her or you know her sister. okay it's your junior sister from where can she hear me or do you need somebody to talk to her in the language you need translation if i talk to you can you talk to her in the language tell her that jesus christ is going to heal her of diabetes what tribe are you madam Eh? He got her up as to Alpha now. Carry mic. What are you here? Oh, yeah, yeah, carry mic. Because I'm trying to. Let's make this easy. Give him mic, please. Every tribe here, there must be somebody. If there's nobody who will lay hands on somebody for the purpose, there's no other mic. Okay, don't worry. Come, Pastor. Tell her that Jesus Christ is going to visit her. Jesus, I chug guy by a dog. Ask her question. And she can't know. And the dream of death that shall be happy. Or now cook and nale. And God is going to heal her. Or not do you know? Lay up with her. How long has she got some? I'll call you by a guy. Does she know what's going on? Get him and get him. Diabetes. What couldn't she do? Then when money gets you good, then it gets you colon. Mama, ask. Tell her I'm going to pray for her, and the power of God will come. Yana chadwe, buyo jo awoji, papa. And me and her will run here now. Onku yana rule me, papa. I'm going to pray for her and we will not walk, we will run together. Tell her not to worry. Let, let's pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. If we do Jesus, if we do Jesus, I rebuke down diabetes from her body. In the name of Jesus. If we do Jesus, look at what is happening to her. It's a spirit. Look at, are you seeing this? Look at the spirit. You call it sickness. Look at what is happening. This is an old woman. Huh? Diabetes is a spirit. I command it to live now. In the name of Jesus. Out of her. Mama. Tell her. Tell her. That she's going to do what she has never done. And she should not be afraid. Tell her to use her hands. Walk. Come. Fast. Come. Come, come. Turn around. Turn around. Run, run, come. Come on, give Jesus praise. Look at the miracle here. Look at the miracle. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at this. Oh, come on. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Hold on. Sam, give us one powerful Igala song. Where is Sam? You sang one song during Annie's wedding. Eh? Sing that song. Tell Mama she's going to dance now. Eh? And the Igala people will join her and dance to the shame of the devil. Hosanna, oh, oh my David. Oh, Chonuka Wama. Hosanna, oh, Hosanna, oh, oh my David. Oh, Chonuka Wama. Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David, oh John, look at Mama. Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David, oh John, look at Mama. Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David, oh John, look at Mama. Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David, oh John, look at Mama. Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David, oh John. 
How many of you saw the way that woman was standing here? You saw the way she was standing. Look how God can change a man's story. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. There is a woman here that they brought. I don't know where she is. But I'm seeing it's, it's something that is a medical condition. I don't know if it's a fibroid or a growth. Please, who is that person? We really have to be fast. A growth, like a, I don't know if it's a growth that the person came with. They, they said the person has something like a growth. I don't know if it's a fibroid now. Whether it's... Eh? No, no, no. The person I'm talking about is here. Oh. It may be inside or outside. I'm seeing somebody. Um, it's like there's a medical condition that has to do with a swelling or growth or something. Who is that? Who is that person? Come. No, you're all, you are not sick. It's, it's demons. Just stand. We'll deal with that one now. Now, your eh? No, no, no. Leave him. This your stomach is swollen. They want to kill you. Somebody, somebody hit you with something in a dream some months back. You didn't even remember. Now your stomach is swelling. We'll deal with that one. I don't know you. I'm just just stand there. That one is is an easy something. This come the come. You have a problem. Come up. The devil, I, the devil wants to destroy this lady. Because if I don't pray for you, they will, I'm seeing your case getting so serious. They will now take you to India for a kidney transplant. What's wrong with you? Kidney nef the, nephritis. What does that mean? You have migura foot, inflammation, foot of kidneys. How do you know it's foot? Doctor told me I cannot lie on both sides of my head. You can't lie down here. Yes, and even yet I sleep straight. You see the wickedness of the devil. That even to sleep, you can't sleep this way. You can't sleep. How and how else do you sleep? Lie down flat. That devil must leave you. What's your name? Precious. You know how? Who knows her? Before you now start talking another rubbish story. Daddy, please come, sir. Our uh, uh, daddy, yes, sir. Our uh, daddy is praying a prayer, and the prayer has to do with no. The hold your photo like this, sir. Open it to the third one. That's what I want to talk to you about. One, okay. I'm seeing. Okay, I thought it was the third one. Back. I'm seeing another photo. This thing is like it's supposed to be three. It's not two. Where is the third one? It's at home. That's the one I want to talk about. That's why I said take it to the third one. You brought two here. But the person I want to talk about, there is a third one. Who is in that photo? Henry. Henry. It's at home. Because we want to pray. Demons stop him from coming. Did you ask him to come? I asked him to come. He chose not to. That's what I'm saying. If that boy had come, let me tell you. Do you know? That if, if, if you can come for koinonia alone, you don't want to know the powers you overcame to arrive. Tell somebody koinonia and see the way demons fight they are coming here. Flimsy excuses. They will tell you, uh, I just think I don't have this. It's because the devil knows. He knows. That's what happened to this person. And you see today would have been his day of visitation. I looked at this and I saw three. Because I'm not. You may see me looking at you physically. But I'm operating from the spirit. I saw three pictures. And I said go to the third one. You left the third one at home. Just like the person to come. If he agreed. The Holy Ghost would have reminded you. And forced you to carry the third one. You see. Please brothers and sisters. When you invite people and they refuse. Don't insult them. You are a spiritual man. You should know that is to you a sign that God wants them to be here are we together now 
Daddy, I'm going to talk to you now and I'll pray with you. There's something about him, but I will not tell you in public. Huh? So that you will not hear that this person left the faith into something else. You hear what I'm saying? I don't want, it's not something where this is a public talk, but it, we don't want to hear that kind of story because it's already happening. There is a spirit that converts men. It doesn't happen by default. We must attack it in the name of Jesus Christ. Where is this our lady? Come. We are going to pray for this kidney. Both of your kidneys is verified that you have a, a kidney problem. So we are going to pray. Lay your hands on it. Please, can we pray for this dear one? Anything that happens to one of us happens to all of us. Don't say it's not yet my issue. Uh -uh. Pray for her. Your prayer is working. There's a surgery the Lord is doing in her. Place your hand on her. I command that devil right now out out of her that spirit masquerading as kidney kidney problem in the name of Jesus Christ I command a miracle for you right now I stretch my hands I make contact by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. My goodness, there's such power flowing. I declare a miracle. I declare a miracle. I declare a miracle. Stand up. Stand up. What couldn't you do before? Press it. Press it right now. surprised even her her and her own body she's even surprised that something is happening her and her own body i pray that god will anoint you to be able to bring healing and deliverance to people in the name of the lord jesus christ you don't know how cheap the devil is until you are really anointed if you are not anointed you will make a ceremony out of nothing but when that anointing is not about trying to get it done if it's there is there if it's not there is not there my dear check it honestly if there's pain tell us we will not be afraid this god is touching another lady heal her oh god in the name of jesus fire is coming on a lady's throat I don't know what has to do. I'm about to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing throat right now. There is a lady like that. Fire is coming. Something will touch your throat. It's like a sickness. My dear, I'd like you to shout, I am healed. Shout it. I am healed. Shout it again. I am healed. Shout it one more time. Go and check yourself and you come back to testify. In the name of Jesus, give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. The anointing is on that lady covering her, her mouth and nose. This lady, I don't know who she is. I'm not, yes, that very lady you are holding. There's a strong anointing on her. Strong anointing on her. In the name of Jesus Christ, strong anointing on her. We're going to be very fast because it's cold and we have to there's one of the ushers the power of god is coming on you now i know you are doing ushering work wherever you are i'm seeing an usher please bring that person right now an usher lady right now you are busy doing your work quietly but the anointing of god will land on you right now where's the usher please bring her 
you are an usher you are doing your work that's all right but god needs to visit you now that you are working whether ushering or protocol you mind your business there's somebody in welfare welfare the power of god is coming on somebody in welfare right now welfare department welfare department i'm seeing an anointing coming on somebody in welfare department god just does strange things they are called signs and wonders we really don't know why it's done before we continue there's one person from protocol that's what i see in the spirit protocol department the protocol department there's somebody that the lord is touching right now in protocol department wherever you are i really don't care where whether inside or outside but god is touching somebody right now right now in protocol department it's like fire it will just come on you all of a sudden it's a sign and a wonder it's a miracle please let me have those people out there's a reason why i'm calling them out that person from Boshri. who is that protocol department where's the person from where? Well, well, well. hallelujah bring three of them it's a prophetic language i want to tell you what god is saying through this the first impartation is God prophesying to men that you are entering into new seasons. So just like an usher brings you, it's a prophetic word. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release it upon you. I release it upon you right now. Just like an usher takes you into a new level. I stand under this anointing and I prophesy enter a new season. Enter a new dimension. In the name of Jesus. The impartation upon the welfare person is the mystery of supplies. The Lord is saying he's ending stagnancy in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is ending stagnancy in the name of Jesus Christ. The person from the protocol, the Lord is saying, I will be your defender. Even in this season, I release that word upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, everyone that came with a sick person, um, it's already happening to Pastor Femi but Pastor Femi and three members of Rema will come under the anointing right now three members who are members of Rema Chapel that's what I'm seeing as it's happening to him it's happening to three people three people who attend Rema Chapel three people in the name of the Lord Jesus it's a new season for you New season for you. New season for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to bring them out. Just leave them where they are. Hallelujah. We have five minutes to do this. Five minutes because there is the session where I prophesy. Please make sure we are going to try to finish fast. But make sure you receive everything. Don't come and waste your time and stay. Now all those who came with sick people apart from those who have been healed if you brought somebody sick please bring them out quickly quickly let's lay hands on them give us some worship. please quickly the lord is healing people there's the healing anointing in this place right now god is a miracle worker God is a miracle worker. Please, quickly. No matter which of the overflows, brothers and sisters, there is multiplied grace in this house. Don't come and go back sick. You just need a touch. It's, it's just a touch. There's no need for any long story. So you don't necessarily have to be saying this what is wrong with me if i don't ask you just a touch even if you are coming here for the first time hallelujah praise the lord those of us who are out here jesus loves you that's why he wants to heal you please i want you to receive you can reject it but i want you to receive it with all your heart as i pray for you you go back check yourself because of time we may not have time to share testimony but hold on please let me say something about testimonies 
um, it is you are robbing God of glory when God gives you healing and blessings. There are so many people who God has been touching, but they never return to give thanks. One of the ways you maintain your miracle is by giving thanks. Please come. Your breakthrough has come. Yes, please, madam, come. The Lord is bringing a visitation to you right now. Don't put her up. Just keep her somewhere because the anointing is still on her. And so that she doesn't keep collapsing up and down. Look how many people are trusting God for healing. Ma, please look at me. God is restoring you financially, spiritually. Financially, there is an anointing on you as I speak to you. Financially, spiritually. I'm seeing God step even into your marriage. Our mother is crying. Your marriage. This is the reason why you came. Because there's nothing there. God is stepping in to do a miracle for you. To the glory of his name. Miracle for you. Who is this? Your mom. What's wrong with her? She has, she has been sick three years. And don't, don't even know what. Why didn't you bring her here? Yola. Yola. Hold the picture. Just hold it. I will use you as a point of contact. Hold it with both of your hands. The power of God will come through the picture to you and will touch her right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your healing power touch mama. She's in your lab, but touch her, oh God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God is also bringing speed into your life. Speed, right now, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Speed! I prophesy it upon you. Never to be the same again. And we pray for healing for mama. He will testify in the name of Jesus. The anointing is so strong on you. God is bringing restoration in your marriage. God is bringing restoration in your finances. God is bringing restoration in your spiritual life. I command everything the devil has stolen to give way. In the name of Jesus. There are so many people here and we are going to be very fast. Just a touch. Please, I want you to believe. If you are standing in for somebody, you can agree with them. As you go back, you can touch them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to believe we'll be very fast in the name of Jesus. All over the congregation, I want you to begin to pray in tongues because immediately after this, we'll be prophesying. While you are praying in tongues, pass your prayer request. Both the one for souls and then your prayer request. Please pass it. So ushers, you can split yourself inside and outside. Someone attend to those in the overflows. Please, very quick. Thank you, Jesus. Let your power touch your people right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A glorious God. A miracle world. Right Hold on, let me attend to this gentleman. I promise that we'll look at him. Everybody look if you can look at it from your screens or wherever. You see that when you look at this guy, this is unusual. This is abnormal, right? How long has it been, my brother? Since last year. What happened to you? Uh, the, uh... I am, I'm just sick. I don't know what is happening to me. So I went to the hospital. They said I should go and do scanning. They said my spleen don't, don't big. My spleen don't big. So later on. What is that? Come now, doctor. You're already there. The spleen is an organ that reserves blood just below the ribs on the left side. I'm wondering that it's a cancer is disturbing me. Cancer? Cancer of what? So for now, I'm still there for this hospital for this uh, shika. So they never told me for cancer for what was still. Who told you about this place? It's my friend. May God bless that friend forever. In the name of Jesus. My brother, look at me. Do you believe Jesus can touch you? I, I believe Jesus. Love Jesus. I love Jesus. I'm born again. I'm born again, sir. You're serious with him? Yes, sir. Very, very serious. Very serious. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. Do you think he will just watch you just die like that? Do you believe it's his will for your stomach to be swelling? If you have a child and you have the power to help that child and you see the child's stomach swelling like that, will you smile and tell him continue and die? Is that love? So I want you to know that this thing...
God has no hand in it. This is the devil. The Bible says, For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest, that he may destroy the works of the devil. Lay your hands on your stomach. Don't let the name cancer scare you. You understand? It is because of what you have heard, the conditioning in your spirit that has made you feel that is cancer. Uh, and made you feel it is destructive. There is the life of God. It's called the way. The very life of God. And I want to pray to you. You believe that? You want to kill that cancer and it must leave your body so that you will not die. I believe that like every other person, you have your plans and aspiration. And this is already threatening you to cut short your life. Huh? Are you married? Where's your wife? Because I'm seeing your wife crying. Your wife is already thinking now and saying that this is how my husband will die. And I'll have to start looking for another man to marry me. The devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus. Father, do a miracle for this brother. We know that cancer is a spirit. In the name of Jesus, cancer, die. In the name of Jesus. The condition for your disappearance in this body will bring them to place. And I'm prophesying in the name of Jesus that this cancer will die and it will leave your body forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will return and you will testify. Make sure you testify when God gives you a breakthrough. What's your name? Sarah. Sarah. So make sure you testify in the name of Jesus Christ. those outside can we rise this is a very prophetic moment hallelujah this is a very very serious moment the requests here contain the names of loved ones I want you to know that everyone is an evangelist this year there is there is need for massive salvation the Lord spoke to me and said he's trusting that he will find the people who will bring souls this year like never before and i told him i said lord i'm available so make sure that from now till december you don't come alone we, we are on a mission not just to ease ourselves of the guilt of not being soul winners it's serious business hallelujah please those who are yet to submit 
the names of their loved ones that you are trusting God for them to be saved and then our requests very quickly we have a few minutes now we're going to do it in this order the moment let me make an altar call before we pray for this so we can conserve our time there are people here hear me first overflow second overflow across the road listen there are people here probably you were invited and you know that you need to make your ways right with jesus the bible says for god so loved the world he so loved you and he demonstrated that love by giving his all his one and only begotten son please by the way i don't want you to miss the series we're starting next week we're taking a series on the gospel we're going to be examining who jesus is and the message that he brought what is the content in the gospel that really saves men so this is profound we preachers have been distracted teaching people on restoration and demons we need to get back and let people understand who jesus is what message did he bring and why is it very powerful where are we really going with all this christianity thing so it's a powerful series you don't want to miss it will be having that all through february praise the lord it will rattle the foundation of your understanding about god and will be walking in exchange hallelujah for instance let me give you a little preview um the message of jesus when he came his message was just one word repent that's all jesus said repent so we're going to be checking what does it mean to repent does it mean to come and emotionally answer a, a, a poem re, to repeat after the man of god what, what is the what is the jurisdiction of that word repent hallelujah so this is very very important i'm going to make an altar call now and while the people march forward please clear the way for them we'll stretch our hands and be interceding first for souls leave the issue of your needs we're going to intercede you wrote their names you know call them by their names and say lord we receive their salvation if you save me you can save them you don't want to watch your family members in hell and they are calling on you and saying you know me we came out from the same womb but some of them we know that they are going to hell there's no confusion about it god is a god of love we'll be learning next week but then the truth is there is hell don't let anybody deceive you there is a place called hell there are people there right now praise the lord you are here you need to make your ways right with god you've been hearing preachers talk again and again outside inside you probably are making this decision for the first time seriously in your life or you've been answering many other calls you don't even know how many and you don't know the name of what you have been doing and tonight you are saying i really want to come out and make a decision or you have even given your life to christ you are a pastor you are you know functioning the body of christ but you know that you need a a rededication of your life things happen around your life discouragements god didn't answer your prayer and he made you to derail out of the way of the lord those two categories of people i'm going to count one to five please for time's sake for time's sake wherever you are leave your seat and run like there's fire on the mountain especially for those outside one quickly god bless you god bless you don't don't fight it win that war tonight there are so many people coming from outside no matter how far don't say it's too far make your way to jesus god bless you one two keep coming please don't stop don't let your friend don't let anyone stop you this is a destiny decision you have seen the power of god you have seen the grace of god you know that he loves you that he allowed you come for koinonia tonight it's a sign that he loves you and he has great plans for you make your way to the front very quickly while they come keep coming please stretch your hands towards this request and begin to pray in tongues please everybody pray in tongues first for the salvation forget about your prayer request please keep coming you know you need to be out here no matter how long it will take please make your way to the front no matter what you have done jesus loves you and he can give you a new beginning so make your way to the front stretch your hands and let's pray on this request all of you that are inside just stretch your hands as a point of contact those outside stretch your hands towards the screen and let's pray
Lord, we pray for every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul in this place. Lord, save them. Some of them are not even Christians. Save them to the uttermost. Young and old, we receive their salvation. Give them dreams. Give them encounters. You died for them. They must not go to hell. You have great plans for them. They need to experience the love of Jesus. We intercede for their souls. We intercede for their souls. We intercede for their souls. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, save our fathers. Save our mothers. Save our brothers. Our classmates. Our colleagues in the office. In the name of Jesus. Our families. No matter how far they are from the cross. Bring them to meetings. Give them encounters. Holy Spirit. We permit your ministry in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now begin to pray over your request. Lay your hands over your request. By faith. And say, Lord, I turn it into a testimony. Go ahead and pray. I turn it into a testimony. I turn it into a testimony. I turn it into a testimony. Shake up a barraco to proscopas. Rekete kerebosh. Rakata barana bosh. Lekata katabara to shoto pregelege de venerebosh. Mabrapa katarako to shoto pregelege. Father, give your people testimonies, breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, we bring this before your altar. Give your people manifold testimonies, manifold testimonies, manifold testimonies, manifold testimonies, manifold testimonies, manifold testimonies. In the name of Jesus, manifold testimonies. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. We pray for every soul represented here. We release angels of salvation. Wherever they are. In the name that is above all names. We authorize these angels to hunt for their souls. They will know no peace till they find the cross. In the name of Jesus Christ. We release dreams. We release visions of Jesus. We release encounters with the world. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere they turn to, they will hear the gospel. They will hear it in church. They will hear it in class. They will hear it everywhere. For those who are vowed. That they will not give their life to Christ. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we, we place their stubbornness side by side with the blood of Jesus. And we declare that their souls must be saved. And not only saved, they will be saved, added to the church and established in righteousness. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for these requests. Lord, right here are humanly speaking impossible situations. But Lord, as I walk upon them, they become testimonies. As I walk upon them, they become testimonies. And Lord, your people will stand to testify in the presence of everyone. Healings and miracles and breakthroughs and salvations and restorations in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, those of you who are making this decision for Jesus Christ, I love you from the depth of my heart and I thank you for coming out to accept Jesus Christ. It's a very noble decision. 
hallelujah there's no need to feel as if you are going to hellfire it's an exciting thing because it looks natural but it is supernatural in every way lift your right hand and say this after me i'm just guiding you but it's, it's, it's the truth from your heart that really sets you free say lord jesus i love you with all my heart some of you as you are praying you will literally feel things leaving you as you are praying jesus said i am the way the truth and i am the life say after me again lord jesus i believe in you and i love you with all my heart i accept that i cannot help myself and i ask you tonight save me cleanse me in the name of jesus everything in me that is not from you i command to leave me right now i declare that i have eternal life in my spirit i'm a child of god my goodness i sense such heavy anointing of the holy spirit even just right here in the altar right here i'm sensing that there is such a strong anointing ministering to people ministering to people something is entering you in the name of the lord jesus christ those who are getting born again as you are getting born again some of you are getting filled with the holy ghost instantly instantly because i see the power of god coming on some of you in the name of jesus say after me from today i'm a child of god the life of god is in me i will never be the same in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted i pray for you by the power of the holy spirit may you become mighty men and women of the spirit in the name of jesus may god do great and mighty things in and through your life i really pray for you from the depth of my heart may you never go back to the systems of this world again may the holy spirit guide you may he instruct you and teach you in the name of jesus christ may you be established in righteousness in jesus name i pray may god bless you i'd like you to follow the lady waving her hands she will have your details and i promise that we'll send you a text and we'll follow you up may god bless you in jesus name follow the lady very quickly hallelujah god bless you please everyone stand everyone stand i want to speak over your life now and please i want you to pay attention those outside this is when everybody gets to receive something mighty upon their lives i believe in the power of prophecy i believe in its ability to change the course of your life please let's prepare the announcement quickly so that we can take it after we have seen in this house what God has done with prophecy. When Pastor Alpha came up here, he was admonishing us and he told us, he said, you don't just believe in the Lord, but you believe in the prophets that he has put. This is not human worship. It's an election of grace. God sends men and anoints them with apostolic and, and prophetic mantles and graces because he wants to use the words through them to step into your life and destiny there will be radical change as i pre i prophesy over your life lift your hands inside and outside lift your hands the power of god is strong i already feel like fire on my hands i speak over your life a dimension of speed you have never seen a dimension of speed you have never seen receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ receive it right now in the name of Jesus inside and outside let a mantle come on you for supernatural speed in the name of Jesus I pray for you every spiritual blindness everything covering your eyes from accessing insight in the Word of God you need insight your life is at the mercy of the spiritual insight you have I'm praying for you like a veil torn from a man's eyes I command that veil to be torn right now I command that veil to be torn right now I command that veil to be torn right now. 
I speak against the spirit of limitation. That force from hell. It allows you to move forward, but it will say you will not cross this border. In the name that is above all names, I come under this anointing this night and I command whatever limit you have seen in your life, I break it tonight. I break that limit tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every strange dream, every spiritual encounter of the night that is not orchestrated from heaven, every visitation of demons, they appear as animals, they appear as men, as women, they appear as all kinds of things. Seeing yourself in primary school wearing all kinds of things, I don't care what it is. In the name that is above all names, I command judgment upon those spirits now. I command judgment upon those spirits now. Every voice that calls you forth in your sleep and programs tragedy over your destiny. The Bible was not, it didn't leave us in darkness as to what happens when men sleep. I pray whatever calls you forth in your sleep and reprograms your destiny so that you wake up into tragedies by the blood of Jesus I attack those enchanters I challenge their enchantment in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you prosperity like you have never seen a dimension of wealth like you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus I pray upon you the same way favor can come on a man like a mantle you can carry it you can know you are carrying help that guy please see this will come on people seriously this ministry has enjoyed a level of inexplainable favor I'm praying for you from that which has come upon this ministry let it come upon your life right now I release that favor in the name of Jesus receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it receive that favor receive that favor hallelujah I pray for you and Jabez was more honorable listen honor is not just age honor is a mantle God can is a distinguishing anointing that sets you apart and men not only recognize your difference but they celebrate it I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ from today an unction comes upon you a strange grace that makes men to celebrate who you are and what you carry believe me when I say this I pray for you inside and outside from the depth of my spirit that mantle of honor that distinguishing anointing receive it in the name of Jesus I pray for your families every project that has refused to be completed I don't care what it is the Bible says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it i'm praying for you whatever has experienced stagnancy in your family i supply spirit power and i command it to start moving forward in the name of jesus christ every uncompleted project hear the word of the lord tonight i command you to be completed in the name of jesus i've said it again and again that the next level of your life is a destiny help by way. Listen, listen. I have seen in my life and I have enjoyed the strange ministry of destiny helpers. Brothers and sisters, God does not need 20 people to change your life. One correct person can just step into your life. There was a man who some friends insisted he must be healed. They carried him and tossed somebody's zinc and brought him to those are not friends 
they are destiny helpers my god in the name of jesus i don't know where they are who must appear in your life between now and february but in the name that is above all names i speak to the north i speak to the south i speak to the east i speak to the west destiny help us come forth now come forth now financial help us come forth now marital help us come forth now academic help us come forth now career help us come forth now if there are no human beings to occupy that position angels must appear in human bodies and perform that role I pray for you the Lord told us this year is a year of multiplied grace and influence I want you to go back and meditate on it you already see what is happening in the house the house has entered another dimension and everybody who cares has entered that dimension I pray for you I don't know what level of grace you have been functioning in but I pray listen to what I'm about to tell you in the name of Jesus whatever dimension of grace you have seen right now I stand under this apostolic anointing I multiply that grace upon your life I multiply that grace I multiply that healing power I multiply that deliverance power I multiply that grace for favor I multiply that teaching anointing I multiply your influence where you could not have gone by now i pray by the wings of the spirit may you be carried to strange dimensions of influence where your business has not gotten to where your certificate could not have entered in the name of jesus i expand your spiritual borders and i compel influence in your life in the name of jesus christ when you open your mouth to call for help, I force your words to enter the ears of an helper. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say it again, Koinonia, that if you dare open your mouth to cry for help, I declare, may that word not die till it enters the ears of your helper. I speak to the elements of creation. I compel them to come in alignment with your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ I use the earth as a point of contact every human being works on the earth I speak that anywhere the earth sees you let it compel favor for you some of you may not understand what I'm doing just believe me Job said for out of the earth comes bread I command the bread that is buried for your destiny in the earth I call it out in the name of Jesus Christ I don't know the desires of your heart but I'm praying that between now and the next miracle service that you will come and stand before the people of God and testify to the might of God everything that has brought tears out of your family I judge it right now every career person listen to me we are forcing promotion this year don't say it cannot happen you will fool yourself are you hearing what i'm saying look in the name that is above all names the mystery of lifting may it come upon your life every student here your CGPA has ears and I want to speak to it in the name you had the testimony of that gentleman he didn't even complete the testimony he sent me the text he was praying for 0.11 and that's exactly what he got 0.11 and it brought him to 3.50 I pray for you in the name of Jesus especially for those who are just starting 100 level you will start with a mysterious GPA that will shock people <laughs> 
I pray for those who have tried and tried but your academics is just hooking you you have done all you know to do I bail you out of it this night in the name of Jesus Christ I bail you out of it this night in the name of Jesus Christ finally I pray for you I must pray for your spiritual life encounters that you have never had Listen. you need encounters in your life you need encounters you hear people like Bishop Oedeko mention encounters and what he transmitted in them. I pray strange encounters with the Spirit of God, with the Word of God that will launch your destiny to another dimension. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing dies in your hands. I say it again, nothing dies in your hands. Those who came from far I prophesy to you you left all and paid the price to come carry an unction that will shock all that know you in the name of Jesus Christ you will go back to your campuses you will go back to your job you will go back to your homes with a mysterious anointing that will distinguish you in the name of Jesus Christ I bless you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare that the miracles begin in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Give Jesus a clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. Just give me a minute or two and then we're done. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.